So um, <clears throat> I'm going to call this meeting of the Sherburn Conservation Commission to order uh, Thursday, December 16th, 2021. Um, and I make that a motion because I, of course, who, who would waste their time trying to find out what this cockamamie thing is about making a motion before you open the meeting? <laughs> I move that we open the meeting. Second. Any other discussion? Yes. Uh, I recently watched a selectman's meeting from two weeks ago, and they did not vote to open the meeting. <laughs> oh, so maybe we could drop it. <laughs> Did they did well, they do a should. roll call? Because I've seen other boards doing just like a roll call of who's present. No, they didn't even. I don't think they even did that. Oh, they're too cool for school. Okay. No, we should not. We should do what's right, not what other people are doing, as as my mama would say. Um, <laughs> okay. If you, if you, somebody jumps off the Brooklyn Bridge, should you do that too? All right. Um, let's see. So, uh, Michael Lie. <laughs> what's that? Michael I. Cindy I. <laughs> Jean I. Carol I. Courtney I. Neil. Neil I. I guess so. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to do something else. So that's fine. Um, thank you for jumping in there, even though I wasn't ready for it. All right. Um, so is there anything that needs to be added to the agenda that could not have been anticipated 48 hours in advance? Nope. Nope. Neil, I would just like to just mention um, the email that I sent out earlier to the group if later on when we have a moment, like 30 seconds or less. Okay. Um, we can put that under maybe site issues or something like that. Um, the only other thing, the only other point of procedure tonight is I have a hard stop at nine o'clock, so I'm going to get us as far as I can. And then whoever's going to run the meeting after that, Gene, um, or whoever I, I want to make host, I will do that. But I've got a I've got something I got to do tonight before uh, <clears throat> my daughter's birthday tomorrow. So, all right, um, that's that. All right, so uh, let's see. I'm really really close to having the agenda. My hot little hands, and here it comes. <laughs> so, which is that's what all my stalling has been. Um, but we do always start with a poetry reading, and Jean um, has uh, prepared something for us. So, Jean, please take it away. Yeah. Um... It's not poetry, as usual, it's, some, it's an essay. Uh, this is from Donald Hall, who was an American poet, but he also wrote essays and biography and uh, many other things. Um, he was also the first uh, poet to edit the, the Paris Review. Um, he, he grew up on Eagle Pond in New Hampshire. He moved away, and then he came back in 1975, and he wrote this book of essays called Here on Eagle Pond, uh, and I'm gonna read just this, the opening paragraph from the essay called Why We Live Here. <clears throat> Late spring and early summer, the whippoorwill wakes us at 4.30. Gray light starts over the hills. Thrushes sing from every branch. Clouds snag like lamb's wool on blue Mount Kearsarge. Down by Eagle Pond, just west of us, pickerel leap for black flies. And when they splat on the still water, they wake frogs and turtles. It's a good hour for waking. We keep the green universe alone. But late September is the most beautiful time, and early October, when it's dangerous to drive because it's hard to keep your eyes on the road. Sugar maples flare a red Chinese. They combine with yellow birch leaves, russet oak, and evergreen to weave a wild tweed on the hills in the middle distance. I grant that winter causes pain. In cold January sometimes, I lie abed until six. But even winter is gorgeous. When the moon is high, I wake at midnight and I wander through the farmhouse in gray, spooky light that illuminates every corner, the ceilings luminous with reflections from snowy hayfields. We live where we live for landscape and seasons, for the place of it, but also for the time of it, daily and historical time. Although I keep farmers' hours, I farm no crops. Ancestors who took their turns inhabiting this house arose to milk cattle to feed hens and sheep. I, I work on paper at my desk in the room where I grew up. And I live here because it was my grandparents' place, which sets me into the decades. Thank you, Jean. Thank yeah. you. Very right. <clears throat> Beautiful. All right, um, so as on seven o'clock, we've got our Sherburn um, Yacht Club order of conditions discussion. And who's gonna lead that? That'd be me. 
Okay, Jean, go ahead, please. Um, let's see. I see that John Hyde is here. Is Artemis Joukowsky here? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you both for coming. And for the commission, John Hyde is the Yacht Club representative, and Artemis Joukowsky is uh, the abutter to Farm Pond, where the Yacht Club used to be located. Um, so I'd like to explain why I put this on the agenda. Um, at the commission's last meeting, Joyce Hastings explained why the Yacht Club shed and dock had to be moved again to successfully put it onto town land. Um, I heard that at the same night, on the same night, there was a much longer discussion at the selectmen's meeting about relocating the Yacht Club facilities. So I decided to watch that section of the select board meeting to see what was talked about. Um, in that discussion, I heard John representing the Yacht Club assuring Artemis that um, the area where the facility was formerly located would be restored and planted. And, that, and there was mention of drawing up a restoration plan for Mr. Joukowsky to consider. Um, I want to be clear, the restoration that was spelled out in the existing order of conditions that was approved in 2019 does not call for or grant any permission for any planting other than for putting down <clears throat> New England conservation seed mix on the banks. And the only other restoration permitted in that order is to allow the disturbed area to grow back naturally. So, um, oh, and also for it to be monitored for two years. Uh, so acting on a restoration plan and planting requires separate approval from the Conservation Commission. And that's when I began to think uh, this order should be amended. But then I realized that the restoration plan and the planting would take place on Mr. Joukowsky's property, not on town land. So then I thought, instead of, instead of amending this order, what needs to happen is a separate application, uh, either, either a re request for determination or a notice of intent. Um, so my recommendation, and the commission can weigh in on this, is um, when the Yacht Club has drawn up a restoration plan and has run it past Mr. Joukowsky, um, that they go ahead and do a new filing to get permission to do that work. I still think <clears throat> that the existing order needs to be amended in a very minor way to, um, to refer to the plan that GLM Engineering drew in November. Um, that didn't exist until then. And, and actually today it was revised again because um, GLM engineering added erosion control to the plan. So, um, but that again, that could be a minor amendment and we can either do it tonight quickly if the commission agrees or do it at another meeting. Um, but I, I wanted to make be clear, I made this point, <coughs> excuse me. I want to be sure that um, the Yacht Club understands that all the conditions in the order of conditions have to be followed. Um, and that includes and is not limited to things like, um, you know, where they're siting the building, or where the erosion control is going to go, um, to set up a pre-construction meeting with the agent, what happens with the stockpile soil, what happens um, with how, how does the stabilization occur? And if the Yacht Club finds that they have to deviate in any way from those conditions, then they have to come back to us before they can actually proceed. Um, <clears throat> for example, <coughs> I'm sorry, if you go about trying to put the shed in the position it's, that's on the plan and you decide that's not the best location, you need to get in touch with the agent and at, at the very least show her what, where you decided to put it. And I'm, I'm bringing this up for two reasons. Um, one thing is I want to assure Mr. Joukowsky that the commission's process is a sound one and, it, and it's in everybody's best interest. I know he voiced his concerns about the process during the selectmen's meeting. And it's um, especially important, I think we all believe, that projects that are in our jurisdiction that are either on town land or are being carried out by the town really it's really the our duty that they set the absolute best example for the rest of the general public <clears throat> so um 
that's it. And I'll open it up if anybody has questions or like, would like to comment. Um, I, I can speak if you'd like just to respond Please. back a little bit to that. So, um, so, okay, just stepping back. So we've, we have erosion control. So based on the meeting a couple of weeks ago, we thought we, we had, a, you know, we understood we had approval to, to move forward. And based on the select boards meeting, we had planned on gearing up to try to move off of Artemis's land um, soon. So uh, we've installed the erosion, the erosion control measures. We installed uh, straw wattles. So those are already in place. They're staked um, along the, uh, pretty much in compliance with uh, GLM's plan. We've got our sign posted. We've, we did have a uh, pre-construction meeting with uh, Allery and uh, Jeannie back in the day. Um, so we did have a meeting to discuss erosion control and, and uh, runoff and stockpiles and stuff like that. Um, so our intent was to move um, the shed this year, um, one, because that's what we had agreed to with uh, the select board and Artemis. And also um, we feel like that would be the least invasive time to move it versus in the spring when things are uh, you know, potentially uh, wet and uh, so ideally, we, our, our plan would be to move the shed now. And um, we can talk about the restoration plan. Uh, I know there was no landscaping plan as part of the order conditions, but our thought was just in general, and last week during the meeting, kind of was speaking off the cuff a little bit, to restore the slope um, this, fall, this winter when we move the shed and then stabilize it with some either landscape fabric or jute matting or something like that. And then in the spring, we could cover it with, with leaf compost when that's available, which is pretty much what that slope is. It's just kind of leaf compost and uh, trees. And then down by the water's edge, um, originally the plan was New England wild, or I'm sorry, uh, wetland seed mix. And so we can do that. Or if, you know, if, if people prefer, we could do some pepper bush or high bush blueberry or witch hazel or something, or just go with the New England wetland mix. Uh, but ideally, our plan would be to make it look like we hadn't disrupted the land in the first place and kind of restore it back to its natural state. So however we would need to do that, we're fully on board with working with CONCOM and Artemis just to restore it back to its natural state. But we would like to be able to move the shed this year if possible, just for the reasons stated, and also so that in the springtime, you know, we can have things a little bit more established before we open up in the summer and keep our sending kids down there and you know down the yeah. path Neil, like that. can i respond to that yeah please um so i'm not john i'm not questioning that you could go ahead with moving the shed yeah now uh i know okay. the commission already agreed to that two weeks ago but um we do have a new agent anna allery hasn't been here for over a year so i would like yep. you to go through the steps again with anna please before you begin the work sure that'd be fine and then um just to, just to reiterate, if if you're going to deviate in terms of restoration from whatever is in the existing order, you do have to bring that back to us. Right. Okay. So how would uh, so right now the existing order is the wetland mix. So we can do that. I think. I guess uh, we can either just do do just that, or if there is something, you know, Artemis. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. If the New England wet Lynn mix now, that's pretty much what the natural condition is is that what we want to do um, we're fine doing that or if there's uh, you know we, we're willing to you know work with Artemis and the concom just to restore it back to its natural state so I think um, if I may <clears throat> I think it's maybe too late in the year to spread a seed mix and that right. what yep. you ought that's to do right. immediately is you know some sort of temporary stabilization but uh, yeah, uh, it sounds like uh, you need to get together with Artemis to see what sort of restoration would satisfy him. Yeah. I, I would just like to say, I, as even after that meeting, I'm still not 100% sure where the shed will be moved to. I'm not entirely sure how the dock will work. I, I, I saw that presentation. It was not a detailed 
um, proposal in my view of what it, what it is to plan. So um, I would I would like that John to have a meeting with you and go over exactly where it's going to go from my property to town land. Um, I do want there to be an open flow of my property and the path of my property to the yacht club and to the beach. I don't want it to be um, obstructed by uh, a fence or anything uh, like that. But I do want a commitment from the yacht club that, you know, in the future that boats won't be stored down there, that there is a an attempt to maintain that space as a um, as a, a beautiful space, not like a storage area uh, for boats. I, I just find uh, for whatever reason that this year it is particularly uh, in the last couple of years, my, my property has been used for the benefit of the Yacht Club. And um, it's just it's just got to a point where it feels um, like it's not a fair relationship from my standpoint. And I do want the town to really commit to managing this and going down and saying, you know, these boats are not going to be stored on Artemis's land or even in the way of the path. I want there's some future process of oversight from the town to the Yacht Club to make sure I'm not having to make these phone calls uh, and complaining about how my property is being used. So I, I don't know how that gets um, adjudicated in this process, but John's not always going to be here. And I do want the town to play a role in really reviewing how not just the town lands used, but how it affects my land. Well, I, th I think some of that stuff is within our purview, because if there's any activity it's, it's with, that is within jurisdiction, that's something that if that if it's impacting jurisdictional areas, we need to be we need to know about and be involved in in terms of some of the other stuff, I think that's kind of outside of our sphere. So unfortunately, there's there's some, you know, some different roles that people and town bodies can play to address the concerns that you have. And I think you're right to go to the select board in the first place. But, you know, for our purposes, we've issued an order and we're trying to make sure that that's the conditions within it are followed. and and that you're you know not impacted in any way that goes outside of what's already been agreed to in terms of the permit can i answer can i just ask a logistical question mm -hmm. when this original proposal came in front of this committee two years ago why did this committee not insist on a survey to determine that that where the yacht club was going to put the shed was on my property that's a very good question and you're reminding me of a point I wanted to make to the commission. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to why that happened, but I will say that it's it's really standard practice when somebody files a notice of intent for them to include an engineered survey or an engineered drawing. So uh, there have been a couple of instances over the years where the commission has decided, well, maybe we don't need that. I, I disagree. I think we should always ask for the same standards to be upheld. And this is a case in point where it wasn't surveyed. And here we have this problem of it having been put in the wrong place. I, I think it's a so I, I can just textbook place. I mean, it's a perfect example of why for everyone's benefit, you have to do it. And the other thing is I was not informed in a proper form, forum to actually review this before it was done. One day I just looked out my window and there's a Komatsu digging up my property and I knew it was on my property and I went down and tried to stop them. They said, this is town land. And, you know, I've been dealing now with this for th two and a half years. Two and a half years I've been dealing with a very acrimonious relationship with Yacht Club because I intuitively knew it wasn't on my property then I had to go get a survey to prove that it was on my property. And then all this other stuff happened. It's just not a fair, it's not a fair or even kind way to treat someone who's given my property for 24 years for the use of this club. And then to have that be 
the way I'm treated after all this time. I mean, it's if if I could just just respond to a couple of the, couple of points quickly. One at the select board, we do we do have a civil engineer that we've engaged to draw up a plan, and that was presented at the last select board meeting. And uh, it was a stamp surveyed plan it showed the location of a shed, and the floats and your boundary line as field verified and done on paper. So that that was what you know we reviewed it with the select board at last at the last meeting so that so where, where the shed's going to go it shouldn't be unclear um it's documented it's been submitted to both concom and the select board and it was reviewed during the meeting um john and, i have never i so, never thought before that meeting Artemis, if you don't mind just uh, just let me just oh, uh, let me just, let me just make a point so i am the abutter and i still have not seen where that proposal is except for that a five minute interlude in that meeting so I'm still extremely unhappy with this process. Okay. I think we just need to re realize that we're in ComCom -com just to keep things. Um, so in terms of the, in terms of, in terms of the condition, the order of conditions that we have for this project, Gene, do we have the surveyed plan that John's referring to? Well, it was, it was only drawn up this past November. So as I said, during my spiel, um, we have it now. I think we need to officially amend the order of conditions to refer to it, but okay. I don't think we have time then, to do that tonight. I just no, also but, uh, know if can I can add share more. that. Just hold on, hold on, guys, one person at a time. It was please. shared at the last meeting, Carol. That wasn't um, me. That was Courtney. No, I said, can we share that with Artemis? Well, that's okay. Can I, again, let's, uh, Jean, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make one more point about the location of the shed. I was going to ask. John, if they could please stake out the location so that <clears throat> so that we can all see where it is, so that Artemis could see where it is. So if we have a copy of the plan right now, there's absolutely no reason not to share it with Artemis. So let's do that. Um, I don't want to take up amending the order tonight because we are already close to 10 minutes behind our schedule. So I don't want to go off any further. Um, Artemis, we are going to get uh, this, the, the plan in your hand. Um, and then, you know, uh, we're doing a little bit of a reset because we have a new agent. So Anna is going to work with John and, and review the, the project. Um, you know, and you're welcome to, to give input on that. Um, and maybe what we should do just to just to kind of because what I remember, and it's a dim recollection, but what I remember from this original thing was that it was sort of seen as we were just improving things. It was on the wrong, it was in the wrong place. Let's move it. And so I think at the time we just judged that we wouldn't need anything like an engineer plan. But Gene's right. We almost, you know, more often than not, we require one. Um, but sometimes it's just within our latitude, and we made a judgment call. And unfortunately, it didn't. It didn't work to to every stakeholder's satisfaction. And I apologize for that. So I, I think let's try to let's try to fix that by being over communicative as we go forward with the work that's being done when it's being done, all the plans that we have that we're sharing with Artemis and also, you know, obviously working with the Yacht Club to, to get, get the work to move forward. And so everybody can end up, even if it's not going perfectly now, it'll end up in a place that everybody's happy with. Does that make seem reasonable? Okay. Um, Carol, you have your hand up and if it's quick, I'll let you get in there. Yeah, two things. One is, I, I really agree with what Jean said, that sometimes we don't want to be burdensome, but then we get into murky situations. But I did want to mention one other thing to Artemis. I recently had kind of a similar issue on my own property. Once you have your property boundaries determined, you can put, you know, um, there's just these kind of standard stakes that you can put. And um, it's just a suggestion you might want to do it there because that might be helpful to everybody on farm pond committee at the very least to know exactly where your property line is not to burden you you can they're quite inexpensive you can just drive them into the ground that was my only suggestion i know it isn't particularly regulatory but uh, i certainly am sympathetic to what he's doing with. absolutely okay great so sorry just to, just to be clear so are we uh, so based on discussions tonight in the previous meeting are we still clear to continue with the move yes I, i'm sorry that that wasn't crystal clear uh, yeah. you okay. are but please beforehand be on the site with anna our agent yep. 
Okay, no problem. I'll uh, and I can email you, and uh, I think I got your email address today, and I'll be in touch. Great. John, uh, just to the question of property lines, do you now know exactly where the property line is? We do. Um, On the ground. Yeah. We do. We've, we've uh, engaged a civil engineer and it's all been laid out and uh, we've got the boundaries marked. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, okay. That's it for now. Um, and then Artemis will make sure to get the, the plans over to you as well. All right. Um, thank you. So uh, let's move on. Like I said, now we're about uh, almost 15 minutes behind and I got, we got to, I got to crack the whip here. Um, right. So thank you. Um, all right, so uh, budget discussion. Let's let's get into it. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at the draft that came from me um, early this week? Well, wanna, me, yes. Do you want to put it up on the screen? I uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Only, and I'll sorry. I don't mean to be abrupt, but the reason <laughs> I'm saying no is because we talked about it last week. I think the issues of substance are understood i figured we would just go through what those issues of substance are and if people are okay with it then we should vote to advance this budget proposal to the advisory and the select board well i say take it away okay yeah. all right so that means i got to dig this stupid document out which i don't have <laughs> so but basically the things in my mind are we're we're asking for an increase in the agents uh in the cost of the agent salary because we're going to 35 hours regular part-time benefited um, we are going to actually we do so <clears throat> we had a couple of offline discussions just about the minutes clerk and it's something that we want to do certainly but I also feel like it's a little bit premature like I want us to talk a little bit about it what does it mean we have a mechanism by which we can um, do the minutes clerk without impacting the town financially but we're it's still a higher so we basically what we'd have to do is, uh, you know, take this fund, this state filing fee fund, apply some of that money to the wetland protection work that Elizabeth does, and then whatever we sort of knock her hours down, we then would go ahead and hire a minutes clerk. So, and yes, Kelly. Just a quick question about um, the discussion right now. Is it necessary to go through the issues? where it, I think everything in that proposal has been talked about a lot um, <clears throat> is in agreement and can't we just ask for a question or comment instead of reviewing it? Uh, the only reason I wanted to do a high level review is because there's a little bit of justification that went into it that didn't show up in the budget proposal that happened between then and now. So um, if you don't mind, I'll just take another minute or two, but uh, thank you for the suggestion. <clears throat> so basically, but, but that, that'll push me to my, in a nutshell, um, we are not putting the minutes clerk stuff into the budget proposal because I want us to just kind of be a little bit more deliberate about it before we just kind of, because it's a little funky and it may look a little funky and I just rather sort of have that all lined up. So we pulled the minutes clerk stuff out. The special projects line is gonna remain level funded. Um, all the other expenses are going to be remaining level funded. The only difference is the agent's hours and the increase in that in that cost. So does anybody have any questions about any of that stuff? Um, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to make sure that uh, essentially, right, it's all level funded with the cost of living increase except for the, for the agent administrator position. Right. I got that clear. It's only a matter of in the justifications I sent you some notes that hopefully we can do a little more boosting of the justification of some of that stuff in terms of uh, some numbers of projects and things like that Great. Uh, that I sent yeah. you. Other than that, I think that we could strengthen our argument about okay. it all. All right. I, I'm, thank you for sending along comments because, to be honest with you, I was looking at that section myself and thinking we need more, but also, you know, expediency was was driving the process. So. Um, if everybody's okay with it, I will take Michael's comments and work with Kelly and, and Gene potentially to just kind of buff up that stuff to give a better sort of justification. But are there any other sort of substantive questions or concerns about how we've gone about setting the budget? If not, then oh, I'm... Uh, sorry, I, there is one thing. I mean, Kelly's already mentioned this uh, to everybody that the... Um, the cost of MACC membership has gone up by a small percentage, but uh, 
I dug into that a little bit and it, it's only membership for the members. And I know that if we want to add one more person to that, it's enough, <laughs> excuse me, it's another $60. So I am assuming that in fiscal year 23, Anna would like to be, have act, you know, be considered a member of MACC. So I am proposing that we add tack another $60 onto the, the MACC cost of membership. And is that correct? You would like to be a member? I thought they were always members. That's not included? Wow. It's only the commission members for a set amount of money. And any other person that wants, anybody on staff who wants to be added, it's another $60 per person. Anna, do you want a membership? I don't know why she's not hearing me. I think she's frozen. She looks very frozen. So well, let's, we just, just, let's, let's assume she does. We would um, have to lower some other line item, basically. I will lower it because the uh, land management is so up in the air anyway, <clears throat> and it's um, $6,000. That's the place to lower it. Another $60 it won't make any difference. Okay. Yeah, we're, you know, we can pay for it out of God knows what fund, you know, we can do conservation trust or whatever. It's $60. Mm -hmm. I mean, Okay, I, that's fine. Let's let's figure out a way to spend the extra sixty bucks. That's fine. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions? All right. I have a question, I move... but a comment. I I am and I remain opposed to decreasing any line items ever. Yeah, I, I would prefer not to do that either. Um, okay, so we'll figure out the sixty dollars. Um, any other comments or questions? All right. Um, I move that we uh, sub that we approve submission of this budget proposal to advisory and the select board, keeping in mind that we'll do some work to get this sixty dollars paid for, whether it's in the budget or outside of it. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, Jean. Aye. Neil. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Michael. Aye. Carol? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate all your work on this. Thank you, Neil. I'll be in touch. Sounds good. All right. Uh, fabulous. Now we're only five minutes behind schedule. So now we're doing enforcement for Constitution Village. Anna, are you going to take point on that? Yes. Um most of this section is actually going to be a presentation by the consultant who did uh, the wetland impact statement that um, was done for the municipalities um, impacted by this violation. I just want to remind the commission that we issued an enforcement order and ratified it at the last meeting. This wetland um, report from, um, from, I believe, Mark Arnold, you hear, um, was actually the first that we, first acknowledgement that we have gotten from, uh, first written acknowledgement that, that we have gotten uh, about the violation just as the town of Sherburne. And uh, our deadline was uh, December 9th and we got it on December 9th, which um, you know made me really happy. And uh, we have not amended the uh, enforcement order yet. And um, so that will be a question following the presentation to the commission as to whether what we've received um, uh, through in this report um, is sufficient and whether we have enough confidence that the Holliston enforcement order um, saying when the work, this proposed work needs to be done, um, if we wanna just ride on that or whether we do want to amend it um, just to say that the deadline is April 1st. So, um, over to you, Mark. Right, do you, did you want to share your screen? 
Uh, yes, if I could, that would be great. Uh, Mark Arnold here with Goddard Consulting. Um, I'm the one who did the evaluation of the wetland system. Um, I'm a certified professional in, in sedimentation and erosion control. I've been doing erosion control monitoring for over seven years around wetlands. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Um, so we did have a meeting with the share, uh, the Hollis and Conservation Commission on, on Tuesday. They have reviewed this report. Um, they modified um, their enforcement order in the sense of uh, just clarifying the action items that we have in this letter uh, and authorizing us to start the remediation work within the Basin Sea, which has already commenced as of uh, yesterday and today, which I have been out on site both days reviewing um, the cleaning of the silt in the Basin Forebay and then the Basin Outlet Structure and Spreader to ensure that we clean up the sediment that's been entrapped there so that way in future storms, we don't have any more transport sediment that's been deposited there. So I'm just going to walk um, the report actually backwards, um, just because in the sense of we're dealing with the, the Sherborne Holliston town lines, um, which are basically along along Doping Brook here. Um, and so this is just a, this is fig sketch two at the end of the report. Uh, I had to do two of them because the plans didn't really give me a good locus offsite showing uh, particularly where um, the recreational trail crosses um, from Sherborne into Holliston and where it also crosses Doping Brook, which was where we ended our evaluation um, based on a few things. One, the uh, the review of Doping Brook up gradient, which was we weren't finding any sediment deposits within the stream system. And, and second of all, we knew uh, we saw sediment deposits from the uh, recreational path in the stream bed, which included gravel, sand, uh, and sediment, um, which already compromised any type of Evaluation of the stream downstream of this area because there already been a, a silt and sediment discharge into the into the river at an unknown time, but it happened um, within the same time period and therefore any evaluation further on would have been difficult to impossible to evaluate which sediment was from which source. So um, this was the area we reviewed again we reviewed basically from the basin sea outlet through the buffer zone down this wetland stream ditch which was a resource area it connects to doping brook here and then down to here. Sketch one is just a little more of a detail showing the actual delineated resources, which we have the bank delineated. This is the actual delineated wetland system here. There's a channel that goes down here and the wetland splits off here and here. Um, Basin C with its outlet structure, uh, spreader right here. And then this is just the general path that the water took out of the basin through the buffer zone before it actually entered the wetland system. So just working, working our way back um, right on the Sherborne Holliston line at the trail, you can see uh, photo 60 is the down gradient section of the stream below the uh, recreational trail. To the left, you can see a gravel sand washout from the actual pathway into the stream bed here. Um, and then again, um, you can see here, there's actually cones, there's old waddles. I'm not sure which town put those in place or it was the trail commission. Um, but that's what I saw there is that there's been a wash out of the trail here uh, on both sides. This 59 is the upgrading side of that pipe culvert. Um, again, you can see there's sand and erosion on the side here that's gone into the system here. Reviewing Dopping Brook, um, upgrading of the recreational path. Here's just an example photo. You had a pretty wide riverine system, uh, muddy to sandy bottom, depending on how wide it was, how deep it was. You had sections where there's just a lot of leaves, roots, and sticks. Um, some of some aquatic plants growing in on the edges here. Um, but then you also get sections where you have natural sandbars um, actually within um, uh, Doping Brook. And this sand we know is natural because we reviewed this, the Doping Brook upper gradient section of the river where no sediment could ever have gotten into it. And that stream has, this river has a natural sandy bottom, even up gradient in the upper watershed. Uh, above where anything could have from the site could have gotten into this river system. Uh, again, another photo here, 53, again, showing that sandy bottom, 52, again, sandy bottom. And then 50, 51 is where, uh, is just 51, 52, that's where the water, where the siltation came in to Doping Brook from the basin and the, and, and the upgrading wetland system. So again, um, that's the, the characteristics down gradient. So up gradient of of those two locations, this is natural stream bed um, that's been undisturbed, unimpacted by any type of discharge that I'm aware of. And you can see the natural sandy characteristic bottom of the stream system 
Um, so from that, we don't believe there's really any siltation or deposits within doping rook um, that require any remediation. There was definitely a temporary water quality impact um, and the Holliston Conservation Commission has, has reprimanded the, the owner for that and um, definitely required some additional uh, additional work in terms of remediating the basin and make sure it's going to be clean and functioning well. Also making sure that all the super boards are up to, up to date and that the client's keeping up with those, particularly the, the season that we're in now with winter setting in. So that's the doping brook section um, narrative here. But again, basically there's there's been no permanent impacts, no remediation or restoration is, is necessary in that area. Working upgrading of that, you go into the wetland system that's uh, in the town of Holliston. Um, so this is the, the stream section, it's a stream, uh, in the sense of it's very braided, um, in the sense of it's hard to delineate a bank. If you had to go out there and delineate a bank, it'd be very difficult. But you have some flow sections here. You can see here and here. Um, here you've got a, a fairly um, organic, muddy uh, washout. And then again here, you can see the leaves very distinctly. Um, and there is some sand in here. But as we go up, you'll see this is the same natural sandy deposits that we saw in the actual doping brook. Um, so I, I believe the soils in the area are pretty sandy, and so that's just a natural substrate um, that you see in, in an area where you're seeing some water. And again, this was a natural, this was an old stream system that was probably a ditch, farmer's ditch, probably saw water flow, washout. Um, and so you, you, this just natural deposits that we think we, we found here. Um, working our way up again, you can see sandy deposits, but nothing that's a, a silt film on leaves or anything else in this area here. Even here, you can see we probed into the sand just to kind of get an idea. Is, 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 and I saw the sand, I said, is, is there a layer? Is there a break in natural substrate to actual um, silt there? There was nothing there. Was nothing there. And as we worked our way up, um, we really didn't find anything significant on the leaves, particularly along the edges where you would have expected a film to form. Um, nothing on the bottom that really picked up anything. Um, 50, 35 here, uh, you see actually where my finger rubbed off the silt on the leaf. So that's the deposits we had. And this is right below where the, where the sediment came through the buffer zone and entered the wetland system. Up from there again, this is just again, characteristics, um, fairly consistent conditions, nothing with significant sediment deposits of any kind back there. Uh, 29 and 30 are fixtures upgrading of where the, the cloud silty water came in from the buffer zone, which is natural um, stream and ditch area where nothing has gotten in, to my knowledge, and didn't see anything in the buffer zone around it. So this is pretty natural conditions as to what the wetland was before anything actually happened. That's the wetland system there. The buffer zone um, also saw some, um, seeing some natural rilling through it um, as water has meandered through it. There was, I would say, a little more of a film on the leaves in the buffer zone here. And as you can see it right here on this leaf here, um, you can see it on these leaves right here, um, but nothing that's um, in the sense of able, uh, you couldn't remove it without heavily raking the whole area, uh, just taking out all the leaves in the entire area, probably damaging a lot of vegetation as you go um, to try to remove the thin layer of, of, of film that's already been, it's already there on the leaves and it's gonna be slowly naturally entrapped in the actual leaf matter um, and vegetation that's there. Again, this is again downgraded basin seas outlet here. Again, you can see a film, but even in the deep sections of the water where um, these are these are pooled, they're not flowing. Um, you would see deposits. You would see deposits, particularly in this location where it's right where the discharge was. It would have been as silty as possible in this location, and there's nothing that's in, that's uh, really measurable in depth besides that thin film that you can uh, just skim off uh, a leaf. Basin C. Um, as anticipated, the riprap spreader caught a lot of sediment. So this area is being completely rebuilt in the sense of we're digging out all the stone down to the fab down to the construction fabric, new fabric, fresh stone, all the uh, old stone goes away and, and gets used um, as structural fill somewhere else. Um, this basin outlet where we are uh, pump pumping it down, cleaning it out, making sure there's no sediment deposits and then letting it naturally refill. Uh, the basin overall didn't have too much sediment that was really um, noticeable, particularly you can see in photo 12 here, you can see some natural bottom, muddy bottom, and then some, some fine silt. 
a lot of it got trapped in the vegetation, particularly in the, the four bay and the upgraded section of the basin, but there wasn't really much of a persistent uh, um, sediment there. Photos nine and 10, um, there was a berm that used to go between two sections of the basin. That basin, that berm was removed to modify the basin into a larger basin. So that's why no vegetation has come into this area yet. But that's, uh, so that's just a natural condition that's there. Again, here's the northern section of Basin B. This vegetation saw, again, some thin film sediment in there, but nothing that was a significant coating to the bottom of the basin, um, particularly because the four bay took the big brunt of most of the sediment. When you can see here, this used to have um, three quarter to one half inch gravel, and you can see how the gravel is now basically choked with sediment. So this has all been cleaned out, new fabric stone down as of today. Uh, again, here's the four right here. My apologies, this draft watermark came up. I've had issues with Microsoft Word before, and I don't know why it pops up. It's not there in the Word version, but it pops up in the PDF version for some reason, and I still have to figure that out. Um, but the, uh, this is, again, the four bay. Again, you can see there's a lot of sediment got trapped in this uh, vegetation that was here as well. So we, again, we, we clean this all out, fresh stone. Even the riprap that comes in at the inlet, this has all been removed, fresh, fresh stone down that way. Um, and then the pipe was also cleaned. So that way, as clean water comes down the pipe, it runs over clean stone that has no sediment trapped in it, runs through all the stone, then it runs down to this, this check dam here, which is fairly clean and will result in a fairly clean discharge uh, in the future. So the, the Holliston Conservation Commission did approve um, our action items on uh, being directed by my uh, supervision, which is in the sense of um, ensuring that everything upgrading was uh, is stabilized sense of loaming, seating, and installation of erosion mats along old car path way. Most of the side slopes are upgrading slopes are all stabilized um, and the road is all paved. The deep sump catch basins um, have been cleaned uh, so they've been cleaned of anything that has accumulated there. Uh, the inlet pipe has been cleaned. The four bay has been, clean, been cleaned. Uh, the basin sea outlet structure, um, they might, uh, I think they got that to, I think we got that, did we? It's been a busy day. So that's been cleaned or it's gonna be cleaned tomorrow. Um, and then the, uh, the outlet structure, that was the one thing, um, the spreader, the commission wanted the spreader for the basin sea outlet listed as a separate item. Uh, I did prepare them a letter um, just because it was strictly about basin C. Uh, I can circulate it to the, uh, the commission if they want to see that letter. Just basically outline the fact that we added a second line there that I'm going to be supervising it um, and um, and providing a report at the end of what we did before and after pictures. Which again, I can circulate to the, this commission if they feel that that's necessary at this point. Um, but again, our conclusion is there um, was a temporary water quality impact, but there was nothing that was permanently impacted, particularly in the wetland resource areas. Um, some minor film facilitation in the buffer zone, and again, uh, some found in the in the, the first wetland system, but nothing that requires remediation or restoration um, or we, we or what we believe really any further monitoring at this point. Um, with the goal, uh, with the primary concerns being making sure that the upgrading areas are stabilized and the basin is is fully cleaned out and able to function properly. So that's our analysis that we prepared uh, for Holliston. And uh, as part of your order, we, we did rush to make sure we got this done. So um, we did, I think we did this on December 7th and we, we, we submitted it on the 9th because we knew that you had a deadline as well. So we uh, made sure we got this to you as soon as possible. Yes, uh, Michael, you had a question? Yeah, I might've missed it in all of reading and uh... And what you just said, but I'm just trying to understand. Um, you've done all this uh, cleaning out and repairing and redoing of things. Uh, what makes the current setting or whatever you did uh, different so that this won't happen again? What What's changed so that this couldn't uh, reemerge as a problem later on? So the biggest thing that's changed is, is the stabilization of the upgrading areas that receive water um, and that's collected by the stormwater system that gets to Basin C. Um, and that's particularly the roadway shoulder. So in this case, um, the road was being paved, the sidewalks were being put in, the roadway shoulders were not stabilized as rapidly as, as may, have been, may have been preferred, or, or I mean, honestly, I wish they had been stabilized because then we wouldn't have had this issue. But basically this, the roadway slopes were not fully stabilized and the shoulders around the, the uh, sidewalks. We had a storm, the cement washed off the sidewalks dropped into the catch basin system and then got to the basin C. 
Um, Basin C took a lot of the brunt in the sense of it captured a lot of sediment, which is what it's supposed to do naturally, not this much, but it's supposed to capture sediment. It did capture a lot of it. Um, the buffer zone captured a little bit more of it. And then by the time it got to the wetland system, it was actually pretty, it was fairly, it was fairly clean from a sediment deposit standpoint that we know is cloudy. Um, but the, uh, from a, a volume of sediment, it was, it was fairly minor. And at least the, the fact that it's, it was in a long-term necessarily discharge, eventually it stopped and the water system naturally dilutes itself. So that's kind of the reason why I think we've got the things under control was the fact that we got the roadway shoulders addressed and the, the roadway system cleaned in the sense of the sumps got cleaned, which is what I, what I, what was my first priority is like, 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 I don't want any more storms coming. Even if you have clean water and it goes into a dirty sump, then the sediment's going to keep moving down the system train. I wanted the pipe cleaned because then like that's just going to wash it out. Um, so that was something that I caught um, when I was out there. I was like, was like, I was like, guys, the pipe's got sediment in it. We got to make sure that gets cleaned out too. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll make sure we get that done. So and that was already that's been done. So that's why I think we we won't have an issue again um, with this. You um, is there a new protocol for cleaning out that the uh, sumps? So that uh, because we're going to have these more dramatic storms, often there, the so, uh, frequency of that kind of cleaning is fairly uh, spaced out and whether we need something a little better than what is already is the standard. So I, I don't think they, they didn't necessarily change anything with the with the operation and maintenance, because typically on, on roadways, once with, with stabilized shoulders, um, the, the main sediment that you see build up from that is a lot of sand uh, and gravel material that just comes from some wear and tear on the roads. Um, that sediment usually gets captured. These are four foot deep sump catch basins. Um, standard um, O&M is they can fill up to halfway before they're cleaned um, because four feet is a pretty, is a pretty deep area for the, any sediment to, to, to settle out. And what we saw here was a, a, a mixture of of sand and and loamy and finer silts, um, which are exposed when uh, soil is being stabilized for the first time, and any subsoil is, is exposed. And in this case, we had some subsoil exposed on the shoulders, which has a lot more fines in it than your typical topsoil. Um, and so that's why um, we cleaned it because we want to have it clean for any of the natural water to come in. But over time. Um, there's not going to be a, a, a significant increase in the sediment beyond what would be really necessary and be caught by the O&M inspections. How often are the O&M? I mean, it's, the project's still under construction, so I assume it's not a total stabilized site or, or everything that's in the watershed of this basin. Is there, what did Holliston decide is acceptable if, or they haven't asked for any more frequent work? or inspections during the construction until construction's completed. I'm not sure if I have a copy of the O&M on. Well, it's less seeing that than whether. So, yeah, I, I mean, typically, typically um, catch basins are, I think, inspected quarterly. Um, so you have sweeping in the spring and the fall. Um, I was just curious, like, when's the last one that it was done and why was it? Really yeah, well, the site hasn't got a COB. So in this situation here, um, it's still technically under construction, although we don't expect any other, any type of erosion that wouldn't be just normal erosion that you might see. Just, again, minor stuff when someone decides to read you in their mailbox and you get some erosion on the road from the grass they disturbed. Um, nothing significant should be there. So, I mean, I, I'm sure the Holliston Commission, I think they're, I mean, they're gonna definitely make sure that they're gonna check the sumps again before they sign off on this because they want to make sure those clean. And that's typically what the commissions want is they want a record saying you've asked the sumps, right? Just before you got a COC. Uh, we're not gonna give you a COC oh, until we know all the sumps have been re so that way it's clean. Oh no, I'm only concerned. We could talk about it later whether we wanna go with them and say they should have more frequent inspections during construction until it's completed. Uh, so something, uh, so, so that may be uh, something like this could be avoided, even though maybe it's not needed, but something we could think about. Um, so I guess, I don't know if other people have questions, I just had the general question for us of, uh, of whether anybody has made an inspection from our side or what, or what the Holliston people thought about the idea that it was a temporary uh, sort of, silting of the wetlands and the buffer that that no 
that no restoration or mitigation, uh, no restoration is needed. Um, I want to jump in and say that the construction site itself is, of course, on the Holliston side. And so um, there is a limit to what we can require of the, uh, the development company as opposed to what Holliston can require of them. Well, no, I only meant that we would work with them and go say, are you looking at doing more frequent uh, things there? That's why I said to work with their commission Got as it. to what they can require. Um, I don't know if any of these look, how do we feel about the idea that the adequacy of this, that there's no restoration uh, needed and it was a sort of a temporary event. Uh, do you have thoughts on that? She frozen? No. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, uh, you're not. Mark's report makes, makes sense to me. So uh, I don't have a different opinion. Uh, sorry, I may have missed this in the beginning, Mark. Uh, did the Halston Conservation Commission uh, engage you to do this analysis? Uh, no, the applicant engaged us. I mean, the, the, the enforcement order asked for an analysis of this. And so um, Darren held on, uh, sorry, uh, the, the FFR team requested that we go out there. I think we might have done the delineation of the site years ago. Um, I haven't been, I have, this is my first time actually being on the site. Um, so I know my colleague did some stuff on the pout lane, which is the cul-de-sac shown on schedule on sketch one, but I, this is my first time actually being on site, uh, particularly in this area. Um, so it was just strictly evaluation. And, um, what I found was typical of what I've seen for discharges, particularly when it's just silt, uh, a cloud versus actual wash of sediment during like a big storm from a slope or something like that. Um, it's pretty typical for that this kind of uh, a finding to, to see, depending on how much buffer zone. In this case, we had a pretty good buffer zone, which has helped slow the water down and definitely filtered out a lot of silt and it ended up being nothing in the wetlands, which was uh, rather, um, I was expecting it to be worse when I got the enforcement order. And then when I got out there, I was like, okay, I'm just double check. I got it. So I looked around a lot because I'm like, I, I, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, right. because I want to make sure that both commissions understand that we looked very carefully at this because I want to, if there's any remediation or restoration, I wanted to make sure that it was, it was, um, well documented if it was necessary or not. Okay. So, uh, Anna, just a couple of questions for you. So, and, and maybe in the, the, sort of in the context of after listening to, to Mark's presentation, um, what has, has, what is, where is Holliston at with this right now? Holliston Conservation Commission. Was that a question to me? No, Anna. Okay. So they issued an amended order that also said, gave a deadline for when the work needed to be done, um, which I believe is April 1st. Um, and it sounds from Mark like a lot of the, uh, th those, some of those action items are, you know, underway already mm -hmm. um i i don't have any more updates for you about where they are on this okay so basically they there is a list of action items that came out of this analysis that are you know under underway if not some of them completed Halston's given a deadline in the spring of having it all done they've accepted what's been recommended for remediation or not remediation but for just uh, the work that's going to go in to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. Is that correct? That, that is correct. The commission uh, on Tuesday authorized us and I, I got an approving email of our revised list, just adding that uh, sixth bullet point and clarifying who was going to be supervising the work. So that way they knew it wasn't just the contractor getting these bullet points, but it was actually someone out there who actually saw it. So they asked, so uh, the team asked me to do it because I saw what happened. I did the analysis. So I was the best one to make sure each of the areas was cleaned as I found them and, and as they should be. So that way, no more uh, erosion or sediment move down the treatment train. Okay. And so, Anna, we're at the point where what are, are we, because this is the part that you started to talk about in the beginning, and I just want to be clear on it now that we're at the end, which is, we're looking to do what? Amend our enforcement order or maybe piggyback off of what Holliston's done? Just tell me, give me that set of Yes, so we had discussed, or the commission had discussed at the December 2nd meeting, 
amending, in addition to ratifying the order as I put it out with just my signature on it, amending it and adding the deadline of, um, well, being in line with um, making sure our deadline was in line with Holliston. And actually, once I looked at that, theirs was actually the 14th and ours, the, ours with the ninth. We got it on the ninth, you know, worked out, that's moot. Um, so it would be amending it to add a deadline in the spring. And if there were a, if anything else we wanted to amend it on, amend, you know, if we're amending it and there were other things that the commission wanted to add to amend. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And now I understand. Michael, you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to go just to be sure whether or whether we have to check with, I don't know who went to the Holliston meeting, um, whether they accepted the, the basic conclusion that there's no remediation or restoration needed. Separate it, it, from all the changes. I can show I can show I can share an email from the from the agent that I got. Um, I think it was early this um, early Wednesday morning, uh, mm -hmm. approving our our plan. Um, if that's necessary. Um, no. So basically, you're saying that the that the Holliston Commission accepted the plan with the action items, that there was no further remediation necessary. Yep, right. and they they and they and they authorized our schedule of getting the work done yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We should be done. Okay. Um, I mean, I move that we amend our enforcement order to adopt the action items that have been laid and the timeline that's been laid out in the Holliston order. Second. Any other dis uh, any other discussion? Mark, did you want to add something? Uh, I just 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 to clarify, so I mean the the enforcement order was with regards to the resource areas in the town of Sherborne. So all just as a clarification, that I just want to make sure the commission understands that all the action items that we are doing is is actually all within the town of Holston. So um, I guess my only concern is 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 do we have to come back before the commission to close out this enforcement order, or can we uh, do this do any close out of the enforcement order through emails? Once the Holliston Commission lifts their enforcement order, because I just don't want to um, increase any further um, time that I need to put into attending meetings. If if the Holliston Commission, I think, is happy, I think this, this commission is going to be happy. I just want to make sure that's clear, because again, it's it's a gray line where we had a resource area in Sherborne that was that was temporarily impacted. There's no impact now. There's no remediation or action items in that area, um, and everything else is now in in Holliston under their enforcement order under um, and in their town. Just to, just to clarify that, I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Okay. Can Jean, I, under yeah. discussion, suggest that um, the uh, modified enforcement order include the request that uh, Goddard do an inspection on the Sherburn side at the time when Holliston feels like the remediation has been satisfied and report back to us. Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay, I'll accept that. And then also getting to what Mark last said about whether that that satisfaction, whether we want to amend it, that satisfaction of the Holliston enforcement order along with this report back is sufficient to close out our enforcement order is what I think. Well, why don't we decide that at the time? What's that? Why don't we decide if it's satisfactory at the time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Gene, you're suggesting that the amendment be that they ins inspect for what? Of because it, it seems like there's already been, um, like the the. He's saying already that there there is not a permanent. Uh, impact. So what would they be looking on the Sherburn side? Just with the passage of time, you know, and the weather, uh, if anything else has impacted the Sherburn resource area. Okay. Uh, I mean, are you suggesting kind of doing a baseline where they look at it now and then look and see if there's been further impacts? Well, I think they have. I looked think we have the baseline. Right. 
So you think so you're thinking we have a baseline, let's see if there's further impacts. Right. They're gonna do the work. They're they have an April deadline, maybe as part of going back and clearing that order, they also inspect the the areas that were affected on the Sherburn side. I think that's what Gene's asking, right? Yes. Okay. All right. This Any is other? that part of the enforcement order for Holliston. You're saying that they're inspecting we're we're asking for something. I don't know what Mark, are you expected sure. to produce a final report? Um, we I, are we are proposing to issue a report that details all the remediation work that was completed as part of Basin C. Um, that will include confirming that nothing downgrading of the basin outlet structure or a spreader um, changed since our last evaluation. Um, I hadn't intended to go beyond that because if I know nothing got beyond the spreader during our remediation work, nothing could have gotten to the wetland system in Holliston or down to Dobing Brook. Um, so that's where my I was intending my report to close out was just the buffer zone because if that hasn't changed, nothing down gradient has changed uh, in regards to impacts. Well, I if we're going to continue this discussion. I'm suggesting that this be part of our amended enforcement order to rather than putting the burden on our agent to go do an inspection at, in April, that it become the burden of hmm. Constitution Village. I'm okay with that. I just wanted to be clear what they he was yeah. going to do. That we're adding something else. That's all. I just wanted to be clear that we're adding that they that you extend he extends beyond the buffer to just the resource areas in his in that final review. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Gene. Aye. Neil. Aye. Michael. Aye. Carol. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Courtney. Aye. Jessica. Aye. All right, the motion carries. Okay, Anna, you'll amend it. You'll send that over to uh, to Mark and the rest of the folks that are involved. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a good night. You too. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Next up on our agenda is uh, I'm going to open the hearing into Coolidge Crossing, and I move that we continue it to January 6th at what time, Eight. Elizabeth? 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Yep. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Jean? Aye. Neil, aye. Michael? Aye. Carol? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. All right, the motion carries. Thank you. Um, and we are going to have we, did we close 211 farm road i can't remember yes great so we're just reviewing the order of conditions at this point correct okay i haven't had a chance to look at it i'll share my screen the order of conditions that i started with was i went back once again to the one that um I had started with with the um, the only other order of conditions I've done that the 21 to 23 North Main um, that one that I was basing it on um, was 15 Apple Street, but I also looked at another after the fact approval uh, order of conditions that the Sherburn Conservation Commission has issued because that's pretty key to this 211 farm road is that it's it involves after the fact so um it's a sh it's a relatively short order of conditions and so i think it makes sense to go slowly through the first part um which is freshly written by me and then skip around to some sections that are uh more of the standard so so skip a bit faster once we get through the first section. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, oh, I see. I went through it. Thank you, Michael. I, it was very quick. 
and dirty, okay. but uh, I did too. I, I've made a number of comments. Okay. Um, Thanks to both see. of you. So there are a number of parts that I put in point A there that it involves after the fact approval of an existing dock, mitigation of the five square feet that were cut to the ground of the sweet pepper bush, um, one time work in the buffer zone that that'll be described later, conditions to remain in uh, perpetuity for vista pruning, and then um, I, I really didn't know where to put this last sentence or if it belonged there at all, um, because that the, this A is really the only place that I mentioned uh, the dock repair at all. It's, it's extremely detailed in the notice of intent, but um, it, I wasn't, I didn't think it really had much of a place in the order of conditions, but please tell me if, if that's not true. Um, Michael, what were your comments here? I'm not sure I understand them. Actually, I'm curious to see if I, I guess if I may get it's now, they don't show up there. Uh, I'm just learning how it works. Okay. Uh, I'll say a few, one thing is after the, the one-time work, whether we should specify, oh yeah, okay, so it takes a little time. I assume you're talking about invasives removal. The one-time work is actually, I wasn't talking about that, although that's a good point. This was realigning the path. Yeah, I think we should be more specific on this first paragraph. Normally we have the specific activities such as the path or the invasives removal rather than a more general. Um, okay, even though that's also described later on. Oh yeah, it's usually, this is a summary this is a okay. summary of all the activities. Okay. Um, I will add that in. I'm not, um, for the sake of time, I'm, you, you're welcome to do what you're doing there, but I'm going to be taking paper notes, you know, pen and paper notes myself, and I'll go back. Yeah, just and, take it. I'm, just, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm just adding in a few things that'll just be triggers. Just, Good. Um, Thank you. And the thing comments are made below there on just, I think normally we have more, there's a plan title. I can't remember what, I don't see the revised plan, but usually there's a, a title for the plan that's so that you put more specific thing there. And I would have thought it might've been more recent than the August 15th, but maybe not. Uh, just wanted to make sure you check that. Yeah. So this is something that I will check with well, uh, perhaps the GLM representative who's here now uh, can answer this, but otherwise I will um, check this with Joyce Hastings about uh, whether the previously delineated wetland areas, which were also delineated by GLM in 2016, whether um, as part of the NOI review, as I put here, it was an assumption here that the NOI, um, that the delineated wetlands areas were reviewed and confirmed to be accurate. I just, before we issue this, I do want to make sure that that's true. Hold on, how long did the, how long does the delineation last? Three years. What? Three. I know, I'm trying to figure out, was it, was it, but was it delineation done? Oh, the, the pre, oh, this is the previous, oh, combination of methods. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, that's actually. That's not right, that's. That doesn't, there's. The NOI itself defined the delineation. I assume we did. We had a new delineation done as part of this NOI. It looks like from the plan, like the flags are the same. They might be, but I saw it right. be flagged. I guess Mr. Chairman, I can speak on that. I'm Rob Truax from GLM Engineering. Please go ahead. So, and it was flagged in 2016, and then in 2020, Joyce Hastings went back out and reflagged again and confirmed it all. So it was last year, a year ago. Thank you. So we don't need this wording here of- uh, Yep, combination of methods. Yeah, we just, get... we don't even need the previous. All we need is that it was delineated as part of the NOI. Oh, I see, okay. 
that's all I'm getting at is that the history is no longer relevant. It was just flagged yep. as part of this NOI. Right. Got it. That second, uh, D is standard, E is standard. Uh, F and A are as well. I spoke with Joyce and she confirmed for me that all of these uh, one through six here are on the site, not not part of you know the the limit of work, but on the site. And these general findings are standard. Same thing, two, so two and three and four there are standard. What do we have here? Oh, yes. Just a logistics note, not important. Those two general conditions I did not change, actually. Oh, so the blue, uh, as you can see, these are track changes that I made today at the moment, just crossing out redundancy, really nothing big at all. Then erosion control, this I really could use your expertise on. Uh, if you could go ahead and read the section um, that I wrote in, I would really appreciate it. So the possibility of uh, erosion is when they are realigning the dock? Well, I think really, sorry, I think any of these resetting the steps, I, I, I really am not clear about the scope of, of what that is, but it seems like there could be some soil that could be potentially eroded. Um, the installation of bird boxes, maybe not so much. The, yeah, the extension of the boardwalk I mean, hopefully, hopefully not, but the planting of sweet pepper bush, uh, I mean, you have to dig four holes so that there's gonna be some potential there. I would just add um, any such erosion and sediment control shall remain in place and the area shall be temporarily stabilized until such time as the commission approves the removal. Okay. And I would suggest that uh, some of this detail here is what goes in the first paragraph in terms of the very beginning. It gives all okay. the specifics. And this sometimes could be summarized as so the soil disturbance is avoiding for any of the activities. Got it. It doesn't have to be enumerated here. This would detail would appear up front. Got it. And I'm just realizing that you're, you're writing this order of conditions and you're almost you know, blind because you've never been to the site. And that's uh, that's a lot to ask. <laughs> so sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, so with those addition, with those changes, um, so, Gene, you're saying that if the applicant finds any of these activities will cause more than minimal disturbance ground surface surface of the ground surface, the applicant must stop activity constant like all of that would stay in, right? Contact the commission. You know, um, actually, I shouldn't be commenting yeah. because I didn't get a chance to read it ahead of time. So. But I'm not sure that we'd want that. It's, I mean, there's going to be disturbance. It's all a matter of whether it's, it's curtailed. But I don't think there's erosion control on the plan. I guess it, that's normally would have. There the is there not. is not erosion control on the plan. Right. Um, so. Um, yeah. So the prudent thing to do is, you know, we you create a disturbance. You you dig up, you leave piles of soil, you remove them immediately. 
any any superficial soil that's not you know was generated as part of the in, installation gets removed from site right yeah it's just a matter of it yeah this for this thing here they're doing just plantings and they're working on the steps um, it, it is a small right. amount of work it seems to me yeah. i'm i'm sorry i didn't read this but it right. seems to me like the soil that's going to come out of, of this work is going to be minimal and it can be taken off site immediately okay or the soil right and the erosion right so the last sentence of the, the erosion control we don't need that because there is uh there is no erosion control um you know but for example when they dig to plant the clethra uh the area that's disturbed will probably need some sort of a temporary and immediate stabilization okay you know, like hay added Okay. All of these other erosion control conditions that were in this other order of conditions that I was modeling it from are not relevant. Mm -hmm. Pre-construction, I cut out most of pre-construction except for uh, putting in a pre-construction meeting Yes, uh, that comment there, I didn't realize how comments work in this thing here. So that comment really belongs below. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, the mitigation. Oh, no, is this limited to? Oh, yeah, no, actually, that comment does make some use for this. Um, are the steps already done? I can't remember. Folks. They have not been done. Okay, fine. So, uh, okay, so we need all that. Okay. Um, no, what I'm concerned about of any activity, I'm worried about the fact with the Vista pruning that that instead of in, in 16 rather than rather than say any activity on the site, whether they just specify that this is for the activities of the mitigation plantings, the step removal, the invasives, uh, because okay. uh, I don't want to get involved in the uh, Vista pruning. Okay. I'll suggest something else later. Okay, great. So I suggested this um, condition because part of the Vista pruning area goes out not to anything that you could really see with your eye, but but to the edge of the wetland resource. And how are they gonna know where the edge of the wetland resource is if not if it's not flagged? For the Vista pruning? Mm -hmm. Because the Vista pruning is defined by the four bird boxes. Not 100%. Oh, that's why I thought we had it that way. And because uh, I couldn't see the plan. Uh, um, where would the plan be? The plan was in the last previous meeting. meeting. I'm going to try to suggest whether um, that uh, trying to figure out to the chair. What do we have? 8:30. Four yeah, minutes the trail. I don't actually have the plan uh, at my fingertips. So some bounds are are bound by the. Um, bird boxes, but one ed whole edge of the Vista pruning, the pond side edge, goes until the um, wetland resource, and they would just have no I way. I thought it was the trail. I thought it was bounded by the, uh, by the trail. It's looking at the plan, it seems to go farther than the trail. I didn't think we were allowing it beyond the trail that it was bounded by the trail. We weren't doing it along the, the bank itself. 
okay. that's on the other side of the trail. That seems pretty important. And we should just make that clearer. Uh, Rob, Truex, not a, you, Rob Truex, can you weigh in on that? Yeah, the, the trail is the limit because the wetlands are right on the other side of the trail at the, until you get down by the dock. You can see the wetland flags on the plan just on the other side of the trail. But I thought we, at the meeting, we decided that, I mean, there's like, I don't know what, four to five feet on between the trail and the, and the water itself. But I thought the Vista pruning was always going down to the trail itself. Well, I'm not sure do we, what anybody remembers. I guess I told we, we'd have to go back to a previous meeting whether why we don't have the plan. Um, Michael, I have two recollections about the Vista pruning. One is that it was kind of limited in width because it was meant to originally give a viewscape down to the dock. There were concerns that people were using the dock. And this, so... Right, that's why you didn't need it on the other side of the trail because yes, that's where the dock is. Because it was the dock. So I guess that's where I'm wondering. I don't remember if the bird boxes were meant to delineate kind of the sides of the vista. Yeah, pruning. so it was, I thought the size and depth. I thought that those corners defined Probably. it in the, in the trail. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, yeah I didn't and see I can't remember thing. either. Like, I can't remember exactly the width. And I also can't specifically remember if there was additional shrubs on the other side of the trail that obstructed the view. My understanding was it was simply on, as you said, between the trail and the house, because that was adequate to provide view to that dock. So it seems like um, that's the understanding and it, it, I need to go back and, and look at the plan and check with Joyce um, to see whether that's actually what is written and, and work that work that out. Yes, I think uh, that's a good a good way to go. I think you should, uh, since there are two members of the commission who remember it that way, I think we'll just move ahead and confirm it with Joyce. I can, re I can remember I have, that I remember it that way too. I have the plan. Do you want me to put it up? <clears throat> or? Sure. I, I can move so, on with that decision. Well, I, okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm concerned about time because I we could spend a long time kind of knocking this into shape. Is there's there any way much, to do? There's not much more after this in terms of some condition. Ah, some so we're now going to delay. Is that what you want to do? Do you want to put some time into it? I think we it won't take much longer to uh, to finish up this thing here. And again, basically we could approve the order conditions at, with the edits. Okay. If what, are we talking like another five minutes? I think we. Yeah, can. I think we could do some of that. Okay, so it does go a hair beyond the trail in some places. Actually, uh, I have and that's by the dock, and that's by the dock to uh, to get the visibility there. But it's not all the way to the water. You see, uh, those bird boxes are really not at the end of the the hashed area there. Right, but uh, but this was all an issue with relate to uh, um, trying to figure out. I mean, basically, it's as per the plan uh, is the vista pruning. Uh, yes. So I'm not quite sure where we were. Whether we just have to basically reference the plan. Well, and so Michael, the, the we, we got <laughs> went down this rabbit hole because uh, I was thinking since the Vista pruning goes to the resource area, then we would know, need to have it flagged and know where the resource area was every time there was Vista pruning. And that, you know, I was a point of confusion for me. So that's why I mentioned flagging every time. I mean, if they're going to flag every time they do a Vista pruning, do we recall that the other issue is, is whether we recall bounding it to every two years? Yes, that, that is definitely in there. Yeah, um, I remember that yeah. too, Michael. It was every two years or le or you know, or longer. Like they could go three or four years, but they can't go right. one I year. Put a, I put in a minimum. I put in words about that. It was a minimum of uh of two years. Uh the question is now whether uh right. I mean if on, on hindsight looking at what it means to to implement this. I would have probably said that the Vista pruning can only go up to the path. Um, 
so that uh, we don't have to go through the idea that every two or three years, somebody's going to be delineating. Uh, well, I thought when we were out in the field, Michael, that we did say that it, everything was going, I mean, I see it's different on, on this plan, but I, in the field, when we were out there on the site visit, I thought we had said it was all going to be bound by those bird boxes, the height and the width and the length, everything bound by those bird boxes. Right. Which I see the bird boxes are actually on the, the house trail. side of the trail. Right. The only thing we're talking about is goes out further, the hash the area. Only, there's only this little triangular area that's beyond the trail, sort of around where the dock is. Yeah, and and to the left. That's correct. Well, yeah. to the left is, it, I mean, it's just relatively minor there. And whether we, I mean, we we have the right to make the conditions now for this thing here in order to do this. I would say that in order to uh, make this a functioning order of conditions, that we uh, that we ask for a revised uh, that we ask for a revised sketch uh, plan, where basically it's up to the trail on the house side of the trail. Uh, between the two bird boxes. And yeah, that, I would agree with that. That's what we just condition it that way. Yeah. If they want to come back for more, they can try. But I would say that that's how that that's our part of our process of uh, of forming an order of conditions, even after the hearing's closed. Michael the, and and Anna, the other thing I do want to mention is you know this boundary to the right. Um, I'm actually, I don't remember us agreeing. We, I guess we agreed on these boundaries on the left and the right, although it's wider than I had remembered in the discussion. But, you know, I think that Anna's point about flagging this is an important one because as we walk down that trail, there's continued to be cholesterol all along that bank to like, um, to the, to the house side of the trail. So, in any case, if it could easily happen that landscapers would come in and just say, oh, well, we have to prune all of this. I mean, in a way, the, the lines that are drawn on this plan look a little bit arbitrary to me. Well, they're arbitrary, but we've agreed. If you look I guess we way, agreed to it. I don't, I, I, I don't remember. We agreed to the left and the right. Uh, and the right at the top, it was already long. I am there. Yeah. Oh, we sorry. want to revise plan. Um, can we just? Okay, I can do that. Yeah. I don't think you can go, uh, go get on that meeting. You can go on. I mean, we, it, it, it can, we, it's not going to hold up our approval tonight. Uh, that. Uh, so, I guess my main. If I can make a suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Please. Okay. Joyce is actually going to jump on the meeting, but um, she just got finished with hers. But yeah. she's okay with the fact that you limit the work to the trail. And then on either side, you have the bird, the bird boxes, which would limit it left and right as you're heading down the hill. But, but she's going to jump on the call right now and she can discuss that with you. Right. Well, I, I no, <laughs> I mean, she can jump on the call. It is 835. I, I have actually no yeah. problem with working out the details of this um, and, and approving this with the understanding that those details are going to be worked out. I don't think there's any real contention here. Um, but I don't want I don't want this to turn into a, a, a detailed editing session. That's not the purpose. So um, okay. I I think we should whatever it is we're going to do. Let's go. F let's make a decision about it. Whatever has to happen outside the bounds of the meeting. Let's do that now. Let's All figure right. that out. I think that once we've established the bounds of that pruning in principle, mm -hmm. with the four bird boxes in the trail and the lawn on the top. Um, and it comes back to as what you were saying that I think unless Anna, f we can maybe do it offline, whether you Anna feel like that, whether that doesn't bound the pruning clearly enough going forward. I'm just trying to avoid the, I'm just trying to avoid the issue of every two years or every year they have to come to us when I stuck in somewhere or an issue of, uh, of conditions of uh, that I guess you're not sharing the screen on it anymore. I could share mine. Um, no, no, no. It is. It's a matter of just whether we agree that they no. just have to notify us of the pruning when they do it. So look, if there's a if there's substantive items to hash out, 
then we either need to continue this till later tonight, we need to continue it to the next meeting, or we okay. need to and we need to give certain people the authority and the trust to finalize and resolve it offline. I, I just I need a decision. It's eight thirty seven. I've got another. I've got people waiting on the next discussion, so okay, I want to have then. that Let's too. Do we want to move it to later and see whether we, uh, even though it might be after Neil's gone? Now, Anna, I want to ask you um, what remains to go through. Are those are they substantive? Are you in serious doubt about other questions? No, we've covered pretty much everything. Well, then I say that we uh, delegate authority to tie this up. Okay, then. I suggest I'm trying to think of a motion because I want to move to approve with the conditions. I, so let me see if I can't swing a motion together here that includes that concept. So um, I'm going to move that given that the finishing pieces will be put in place uh, by the agent in consultation with um, some members of the commission that don't form a quorum, I move that with those edits proposed that we find that the following conditions are necessary to protect the wetland resources for the duration of this proposed project the commission orders that all work shall be performed in accordance with said conditions and with the notice of intent referenced in the special conditions section of this order and to the extent that the following conditions modify or differ from the plans specifications or other proposals submitted with the notice of intent the condition shall control uh, following review of the above reference notice of intent and based on the information provided in this application and presented at the public hearing uh, the Commission finds that the area in which the work is proposed is significant to the following interests of the Sherburn Wetland Bylaw, which are one through seven, quality and quantity of public private water supplies, quality and quantity of groundwater supplies, as well as recharge and storage areas, flood control, storm damage prevention, prevention of pollution, prevention of erosion, and wildlife habitat. Furthermore, the Commission then hereby finds that the proposed project is approved subject to the findings and conditions contained herein the edits made in this session and those that will be made by the agent in consultation with representatives of the commission. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, Jean? Aye. Neil? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Carol? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. All right. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, let's go on to the next topic, which is the repair of the rail trail um, and finalizing those conditions. Unfortunately, at this point, we've just gotten a little behind with it and we don't have a draft of conditions. And so I had a couple of proposals to make or just to, yes, Elizabeth. You guys didn't vote to approve the project. You closed the hearing, but you didn't vote at the last meeting to approve it. You still have to do that. So we you just approved it. We just approved relative. it. Oh, no, no. Okay. Are you guys talking about the rail trail or 211? The rail trail. The rail right. trail. Under, understood. Understood. Um, so that's that's what I want to talk about now is how we're going to go about doing this. So because we don't have a draft order of conditions at the moment. Thank you, Elizabeth. Because we don't have a draft order of conditions at the moment, there's a couple of ways I think we can handle it. I mean, and, and what I would say is this. There's this. There's a part of me that is comfortable. It's a simple we've already sort of understood there's there's three things i think that are in the project in addition to some boilerplate sort of erosion control stuff um you know that it talks about the work hold on let me just get there oh damn now where is this stupid thing i'm just looking at the glm letter that joyce produced but it's basically uh damn it where is it i had it and then i lost it basically there's there's uh trap rock on both sides of the then there's erosion controls, there's replacement of, it's basically very boilerplate straightforward stuff. So my suggestion, because we don't have a draft is that maybe we empower Anna to write that draft and we can approve tonight. And cause I just feel like we're running into timeline issues or regulatory deadline issues if we don't do it tonight. And at the same time, we don't have a draft to work from and I don't wanna start editing from scratch. So I just wanted to get actually commission sort of input on that, what people think. Are you suggesting that we approve the project tonight? Yes. Um, and assume that, I mean, we already, we already discussed, as you said, we already discussed how the work's going to be carried out. 
there were, you know, very few questions. It was very straightforward. So it seems like the order conditions, once Emma has time to get to it, should be, there should be no, no surprises. Right. So I found actually the section of the, of the notice of intent. So it says, uh, the proposed project will pay, repair and stabilize the trail. All proposed work is located within the existing trail bed. The compacted gravel surface of the trail will be restored. The trail side slopes will be stabilized with a layer of landscape fabric and armored with trap rock. The small pile of erosion and dopping brook at the easterly end of the culvert will be removed from the stream by hand with shovels and buckets. The, the conditions write themselves. Um, and unless there's any real contention around those, issue, those, those conditions, I feel like it's about as straightforward as it could be. Um, Carol, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I I agree with you. And I happened to stop by today and picked up the plan. So there's even more detail there. I think the other reason we should approve it quickly is that a lot of people use that trail. And it's kind of falling in. And it's probably continuing to erode into the wetlands. And so it's better to move this along since it's not complicated. Right. And we, we did issue a, an emergency authorization letter to allow that work to go forward. Now we're sort of just circling back to write the actual order itself. Okay. Um, and so I, I feel like that's what we're trying to get to at the moment. Um, so I don't know if other people, I know it's, it's a little bit unusual, but at the same time, I, I really am aware of the regulatory deadline. I suppose we could try to figure out if we could give, I mean, I guess the applicant would have to agree to an extension of the deadline, but there's, again, I feel like it's very straightforward, but I don't want to kind of go outside of, it's a little unusual, but I don't want to go outside of what we feel is people are comfortable with regulatorily. I'm okay with it. Okay. Did you actually close the hearing the last time? Yes. yes. Okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah. Um, Joyce, do you have any thoughts about doing it this way? I, no, I think what you're doing is fine. Uh, uh, the work uh, the work on the trail has been uh, completed enough so that it's safe. Um, okay. There's so, it's not finished, finished, but the trail surface itself um, is completed. Okay, great. Um, any other comments from anybody in the commission or frankly, anybody who's attending as well? Okay. Well, in that case, um, I'm just going to, let me see, I just want to construct this in a way that makes sense in terms of emotion, because it's a little tricky, but let me, let me give it a try. I move that we find that the conditions that are that I just articulated be put into the order and that all the edits and the rest of it is taken care of by the agent in consultation with the chair and the vice chair and any other commission representative as long as it's not a deliberation and that we move to approve the project subject to those pending conditions um, contained in the eventual order and findings and findings thank you i'll Second. accept that friendly amendment you shake like no what's that i don't like this yeah i the, normally we generally have the, the historically even if we haven't gone over the order of conditions and the level mm -hmm. of detail that we've been doing lately okay. we've at least had the established general idea of what the conditions are and so that it's just a matter of the wording of them and so I therefore, think we do have the the you order. Might, you have it all that you have that also. I mean, your your thing makes it almost too open ended. We already have the we already agreed on the conditions okay. and what they should be. It's just the final wording that we normally used to just get done when somebody wrote the order. We would often approve it before the order was years ago. So therefore, I feel like you're putting in that your motion is too open ended. We've already discussed all the conditions and subject to the conditions discussed and whatever else and huh? we'll just get written up okay um, so so let, let's try to let's try to accept a friendly amendment from you on that because I'm, I'm fine with that suggestion so if you if i'm understanding you right we would sort of amend the condition to say that um the commission finds that the conditions discussed this evening and contained in the original NOI application are sufficient to protect the interests of the Wetland Protection Act and the Sherburne Wetland Bylaw. Um, 
and that the, therefore, or furthermore, the commission thereby finds that the proposed project is approved subject to the findings and conditions contained in the eventual order. How's that? Sure. Better? Second. Thank Whatever. you. Any other discussion? Courtney, what was your grievance? Uh, it's taken care of now. Okay. It was just, it's just very open and yep, makes me nervous. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I understand. That's why I, I wanted, I took a stab at it and it wasn't a great stab. Um, but I, I like Michael's friendly amendment better. All right. Um, any other discussion? All right. Uh, all those in favor, Neil, aye. Jean? Aye. Michael? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Carol? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. All right. The motion carries. Um, I'm actually, even though we're done with this a little bit early, I'm going to take my leave and I'm going to make Courtney, I'm going to make you the host. Is that right? Yep. I can push the zoom buttons. All right. And then Jean is going to take over as chair. So I will just say this. I wish you all a very happy holiday. Be safe. Don't have too much fun, but have enough fun. And uh, we will see. How about just safe fun as much as you want? <laughs> safe fun as much as you want. All right. I like that. Um, all right. But seriously, everybody, uh, thank you for uh, a lot of hard work this year. And, and I appreciate it. And, um, you know, we'll just see you on the other side. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you. All right. Bye bye. You too. Yeah. All right. So we are. Uh... Two minutes away from discussing the emergency certification and since this is not a hearing i i think we can move ahead with that um is joyce still here yes joyce yes um i was going to let anna start presenting this uh request for an emergency certification but can you please jump in if since you have been there too right i was going to stay around for the for that for this discussion okay. here um so Anna, why don't you tell us about this? Anna? So as you can see in the PDF that I think I just shared. Yep. So, Hopefully, it's a little bit easier to see in the PDF than it is right in front of me um, in the shared screen. But this very, very light, you can see the house behind the trees sort of basically uh, form a horseshoe almost around the house, the trees that we're talking about. And uh, you really can't see it's faint, but there is a wetland towards um, the western, southwestern part of the yard that, that this is all about, really wanting to make sure that, um, well, so the only reason that we're involved is because um, all the way up, uh, the 100 the foot buffer really comes uh, all the way up to the sides of the house. And uh, within the 100 foot buffer from the wetland, this property has 17 trees. So, I mean, there's not a lot to see here, except that you can see how close the trees are to the house and that there's a play area. The trees that are a little bit farther away from the house are very close to the play area. And this is a family um, that does have children that would like to utilize that play area. So, um, Joyce and I went out to this property and um, the, there were 17 dead trees and they, these are trees that have been wiped out within the last couple of years by the bug formerly, the moth formerly called gypsy moth. I'm forgetting the scientific name now, but, um, and so they, they're, all of these 17 trees are dead and they all pose a danger 
as far as Joyce and I were able to confirm. And so the reason that we're bringing it to the commission, rather than just writing up a, an emergency certification in the feet, you know, just, just saying, okay, as the agent, I can do that, is because the commission usually only does three, four, five trees within an emergency certification. And so because this is so far without beyond that, um, I wanted to bring it to the commission, but the recommendation is that these, that the commission issue an emergency certification to have all of these trees taken out by an arborist, not by land clearing. That is something that we discussed with the property owner um, that this would be individual trees taken out by an arborist and that they, uh, that they all be done. That's the suggestion to the commission. Um, rather, I guess um, one thing for consideration is that there are some within um, falling distance of the house and there are a few more really, I think it's four that would not hit the house, but would be in the play area. And uh, so an alternative, although it's not what I'm recommending, would be to have those as a separate word that would um, wait until the spring. And um, if, you, if you felt like 17 was too big to do all at once. That's the overview as uh, I see it. Joyce, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, I mean, their whole property, the, man, they have many trees on their property beyond this that I have died. They were all, all killed off um, at the same time. And as Anna pointed out, these 17 trees all are a danger to either the house or the swing set or the playhouse. We, we didn't look at the other dead trees around there that will have potential to fall, but are falling not in these areas. So it was a great number, but uh, the conditions would be that all the work would be done. They talked with um, uh, an, an arborist uh, who would remove the trees. They would use a crane. They would work from the existing driveway. Uh, there would be no machinery into the, you know, beyond the limits of the disturbed areas, the, the lawn surface. They, they, they can't drive into the backyard because there is a, uh, a propane tank and a fence. And so it would all be done by crane. How many of these trees are in the 100 foot and how many are in the 50 foot? I don't think, None of are, the I don't think there are that many in the 50 foot. If there is one or two, maybe. Uh, but most of them are in the outer 100. And at the edge of the existing lawn. So, Anna, are you proposing that the emergency certification only be ordered once they've already set up an appointment with the arborist? Because otherwise, their emergency cert will expire after 30 days if we issue it now? Yes, and they have already had estimates from multiple arborists, and one of whom um, said this is an emergency and I, that he would be able to fit in an emergency. Um, the caveat there is that um, these 17 trees were ones that, that Joyce and I specifically are proposing, but we don't have confirmation that this arborist would be able to come in and get all of those 17 as part of an emergency certification. But I am confident that this um, that the property that the owners would be able to get some arborists to come out and take at least some of these trees through an emergency certification. Uh, sorry, like the within the thirty days. So uh, I don't see it as as you know if if we approve the removal of the seventeen dangerous trees, uh, you know then we've done our job. I don't see you know, the, the remainder of that problem that you just articulated as being really our problem. No, and if they can't, you know, this is the same thing that's happened cut several other times. If, if for whatever reason they don't get it done within the 30 days, uh, we've either issued, an, in one case, we've issued a, a second one, or, 
or they don't do it and they come back, you know, as a, I, I'm not sure. I, they have to get these taken down. I don't think they have a choice. Okay, so now I have to bring up something that's bugged me about this. Um, very frequently, we ask people to remove the part that's dangerous and leave snags. Yeah. Since this, is a, since this is an emergency cert, I don't know how we can condition it. And I don't know that you can do that in this particular case because if you leave, uh, I would say that they don't, they're not proposing to take out any stumps, but these are actually all along the edge of, you know, to leave a snag. This, these are so close to the house that to leave a snag, um, it, the concern being that there's already one snag out there that I, we are recommending they take down because it's uh, it's dangerous because it's so close to the the living area. If this weren't if this were off into the edge of the woods, but but really it's it's they're like all over their yard. Definitely they shouldn't take out the stumps, and maybe they could leave um, like in that clump of three trees, um, Anna. That could be left. To, to be up maybe uh, you know three or four feet, but any higher than that, you'd be concerned that as it dies, it would become a problem too, because it's so close to the living area. Does anybody else on the commission want to uh, add? To I do. That? I have my hand. I have my hand up. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Um, out of the seventeen um, dead trees, what type of trees are they? Uh, there was um, red oak, uh, there was some a red maple, mostly there were oak. Mm -hmm. Because that's usually what, what gets killed by the... Uh, yeah, they were predominantly the, they were oak. Yeah, yeah I the, and you're they, sure that they were all dead because you were going out to see oh. them when they're deciduous trees and they lose their leaves. No, no, no. <laughs> I, in fact, I had seen this property um, earlier on. I walked out there with them. And there, it's it's not only just that their leaves are gone, but their you know their bark is falling off, and they're they're um, you can tell which ones are you can clearly tell which ones are dead. And I had viewed the property previously, um, and they were going to try they were trying to decide how to proceed um, with some work that they wanted to do, but they turned around and decided just to take down trees, and that's how this came about. So if we can't condition this um, to leave snags, and you're not recommending to leave snags, Joyce, but if we can't condition it to leave snags, how do we condition it that they don't remove the stumps and grind the stumps right down? You, well, that, you can't condition that either, it sounds. We do, we do put conditions on it. Um, I think we do, we do conditions that, you know, they have, it has to be staged in a certain way, and there can be no equipment um, beyond the limit of you know, we, we usually come up with four conditions a, as part of this. And, you know, we can just simply state that, you know, this isn't, they aren't necessarily in lawn area. So, but they're just at the edge of the lawn. So um, we can state that, you know, you can't take out the stumps. There's no digging. I see. Stumps. And they, I see. that wasn't their intent. Uh-huh. Okay. Gene, That's I have a comment now. Go yeah, go ahead, Carol. Um, so I had mm, three really big mature red oaks that were hammered by these moths and they really at this point have mostly either fallen down or come down. I think if these are close to the house and especially knowing there's a play area for sure, these are dangerous and they should come down expeditiously. And I just had a tree taken out and they, you know, it's more expensive to grind the stumps. Some people do, but you definitely kind of the standard is to just get it down to like, a, especially if it's a big one down to within a foot or two of the ground. One thing I know we don't usually do in a situation like this is ask the homeowners to plant trees elsewhere. I guess, I don't know whether we ever want to consider that because it sounds like they also have dead trees out in the woodland area that if they were if other shade trees were planted amongst them, it might kind of reforest it before everything comes down. But uh, I'm interested in other people's thoughts on that. And I'm not suggesting anything onerous. I'm just thinking, you know, sometimes you can get, you know, get saplings and 
there, there were saplings out there, and I don't know if you recall, you, you, we, you had taken some pictures. I don't know if it's uh, this, the, the, even the play area is just nestled among the trees. It's not a lawn area. It's really, um, it, it, it's not like if these pink come, come down, it's going to turn into an open area. I believe there's, um, there's already some regeneration taking place. Um, and it certainly it, taking these down does not increase the limit of lawn. And um, just to add to that, like asking or suggesting that they do any planting is different from. I mean, that's imposing a condition. We don't really have the 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 means to do that. But to say uh, no stumps should be removed, and to say where. The equipment has to be staged. That's all part of the description of the approval of removing the trees. It's not really a condition. I mean, maybe then we can say be careful not to take out the, the other saplings around it so that there's some regeneration. Any of the understory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So, um, anybody else? Comments, questions? Anybody in the audience? I guess in the end, there's some, but not a big change in the canopy in this area with the dead trees, other than well, something else the, will come up. The canopy's already gone. So. Yeah, right. So, uh, so it seems we go ahead with it and they'll figure out how to deal with how many trees they get done when. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve uh, issuing an emergency certification for the removal of these specified trees. At, at the um, appropriate time so that it covers the work within a 30 day period. And with leaving stumps. That's, that's gonna be part of the description of the removal. Oh, I thought we had to call it up, but leaving stumps and also not having any machinery past the driveway. Again, that's part of the description of the removal. I'll, I'll forward in a, um, one of the ones that I've done with tree removal that lists those out. So I'm okay. still looking for a second. I'll give you a second. And as part of discussion, I'll say, right, it's part of the description is, is too loose for me. That's why I preferred that we had the specifics there, because I don't think we have a standard description, unless I, we do. Yeah, um, that, but I will, um, Anna's going to forward it to me before she issues it, and we'll check it out. Okay. It's been seconded. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Jean, aye. Michael? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Carol? Aye. Jessica? <laughs> uh, Cindy? Aye. Motion is passed. Okay. Um, so we need to move on to request for a certificate of compliance, but I want to ask uh, the people in the audience uh, what in particular you're here, uh, what, what interests your attendance at this meeting, and, and would you like to tell us when you'd like to, what, you know, what you're expecting to, to participate in? <laughs> and you're all muted. Sorry, I left it so I could empty the dishwasher. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, I was just asking all of our guests um, what was their interest in the meeting. I just be, I just like to know, you know, what they're looking for, what what brings them to the meeting, and so that I can ask them if they have any input. Oh, can I jump in since I already interrupted? So I'm um, Melinda O'Neill. I'm at Eight Fawn Road, and I'm a member of the Farm Pond Advisory Committee and the Groundwater Protection Committee. So um, it was brought to our attention that you guys were reviewing some NOIs for some properties on Farm Pond. So that um, is why I sat in. Right. And that was, that was really only one NOI for 211 Farm Road. There's uh, the other thing that's on the agenda for Farm Road is a violation for one six, at 116 and that comes later. Um, anybody else? Tom Trainer, Rob Wolf. Uh, my name is John. I'm here for uh, 116 Beach Road and Farm Road. Sorry. 
Okay, are you here uh, for, for, Elaine? for for Elaine Wu? Yes. Okay. For the, uh, land, for the I'm the landscaper for that. She writing oh, okay. down. She's there. Yeah, we, we will get to that eventually. <laughs> okay. That's and what I'm uh, Jean, Tom, Trainer here. Like like Melinda, I was interested in the properties uh, budding the uh, farm pond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rob's got his hand up. Um, Rob, I'm sorry, I don't know how to see when hands are up. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I was mostly interested in uh, what was going on with the rail trail because I'd been discussing the issues and um, whether or not <laughs> whether or not the repair is going to work or whether it's going to wash out in the next rainstorm with um, uh -huh. Robert Wideneck and Holliston, who's had a lot of experience with that on the Holliston section of trail. Uh-huh. Well, um, as you may have heard, the repair is underway and we will be monitoring it. And we would be grateful if you would monitor it as well. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, Robert was mostly concerned that um, he thought that possibly the water level on the downstream side just rises to the, um, rises to the point where the water is gonna run over the trail sort of no matter what. Um, but it's only during, you know, pretty extreme precipitation events mm -hmm. that, that happens. So I think we're just going to have to to wait and, and see. But, you know, what I've seen out there, uh, I was out there yesterday. It looks like a very solid repair. So let's hope it sticks. Um, one of the conditions in the order of conditions for that project, which hasn't been written yet as I recall, is going to be a, a requirement that, that the repair be monitored on a periodic basis. And certainly after a, a heavy storm event, we're gonna be expecting, I guess, DPW to take a look at it. We did also discuss, you know, I, there's this new kinds of um, culverts you can do that I brought up. Um, and Joyce Hastings did feel that this would be adequate, but that's another reason to keep an eye on it is whether at some point the culvert needs to be re replaced with a more up-to-date approach. All right, so um, shall we move on to the request for certificate of compliance for 15 Apple? Anna, would you like to take us to that, please? All of uh, the conditions for 15 Apple, um, I would say um, based on the letter from GLM, as well as a site visit that I did last week, um, I would say are complete or really were not relevant to begin with because um, they didn't end up breaking any ground. They used the same foundation for the barn. And so a lot of the conditions that were written in were written in assuming that there would be um, construction there. And there really, it was all within the foundation, the, the existing foundation. The only condition that is remaining uh, that is outstanding is the wetland boundary markers. And so I have alerted uh, the property owner that that's the one outstanding thing and that now that we have designed them that she can buy them through us when we get them and I said that that's going to be in January. Um, I don't expect them to be any later than mid-January when she can buy them through us and uh, I've also uh, let her know that she can take down, you know, the DEP sign, which was a concern for her. She was really ready to take that down and uh, get rid of the erosion controls, which uh, there are many and they are no longer needed. So, um, but that we will hold off on issuing, that the commission will hold off on issuing the certificate of compliance until uh, the time when they bought them from us, they put them up, I've gone out, taken a look at them, come back to you, said they're in, and then we'll go from there. That's when you will issue the certificate of compliance and it will be complete. Anybody on the commission have any questions or concerns? 
So essentially, we're putting this off for now. What we're allowing her to um, move in the direction of. Oh yeah. Oh, those other things are fine. Right. We're not issuing the certificate of compliance tonight, essentially. Right. Until the demarcation is in, right? Right. Sure. Okay. That's fine. Sounds good. Okay, Anna. Just uh, to pass that along to, to them. Thank you. So, um, let's see. What do people suggest we discuss? Uh, I have something very quick that I want to talk about regarding the use of a snow dog on conservation land. Do we want to deal with things that other people might be here for, like Farm Road or anything else? But oh, the snow dog, maybe. Okay. Um, this this will be very quick. I was not. Uh, I didn't put the, put this on the agenda. The question of whether or not we allow a snow dog on conservation land. I didn't put it on the agenda for us to decide on that tonight. I just have. I just became aware that. Uh, Forest and Trails has purchased a snow dog, and um, I just wanted to make the recommendation to the commission that that uh, Anna reaches out to Forest and Trails and asks them to notify her when they are ready to use the snow dog, whether or not it's on conservation land or on town forest, so that she can come and observe what it sounds like what it looks like to her and have her bring that information back to us for further discussion. How does that sound? I have a quick question, Jean. You said on either conservation land or town forest, but but how well how does that work if purpose, if we haven't discussed it yet? <laughs> yeah, this is only for the purpose of an initial uh, observation. So I, I don't feel that it would be reasonable for us to decide whether or not to allow it if we never observed it being used. And I have a feeling that this is just my personal feeling that um, it's likely to be used first on town forest land. So, you know, she can go and observe that just as easily. I guess that sounds fine. And we'll look at it in the context of what our land use regulations are. I can't remember what they are about in terms of snowmobiles or mechanized and no, certain snow allow, levels and things like that. We don't allow any motorized vehicles yeah. except for, you know, people right. authorized to do work. Okay. So at this point, it's motor, it's not permitted. We'll just go play by, we'll learn from it on Town Forest. Okay. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, it makes sense. Anybody else? I think it's a good idea. I think your suggestion is a good suggestion, Jean, to have Anna check it out. Okay. So, you know, prudent. I will. Um, so Kelly is somebody to contact, but you should also copy um, a number of another member of Forest and Trails, and I'll give you his contact information. Okay. Um, so we have somebody here representing 16 Farm Road. Is he still here? Yes. Yes, he John. John's yes. Yeah, he's done. Yep. Anna, do you think we should wait for the property owner or should we move ahead for with this? No, they're asking me to uh, represent them. Okay. Um, all right, Anna, you're on again. And um, it looks like <coughs> Joyce, Joyce, if you want to jump in because you also observed the violation. Please feel free. I think mm -hmm. instead of sharing my screen for this one, that I will invite you to make sure that you take a look at uh, the materials that I put in for this folder. There are several, and um, including um, photos of the unauthorized work that we observed. And um, in particular, I want to draw your attention to, well, I was going to draw your attention to one of these photos, but I want to back up a little bit and say, uh, this was work that we uh, went out for a pre-construction meeting with um, the homeowner of 116 Farm Road on a project that is at the pond. 
that uh, was otherwise ready to go. But we have asked them to stop because while we were there for the pre-construction meeting, um, we observed this work that some that had been done and some that was in progress, uh, much closer to the house, completely separate location on the property, not close to the pond, but close to the house. And I, I think I have an Oliver uh, screenshot in there that you can see the, the wetland, the two different wetland areas, um, that there was work unauthorized work that, that um, because it was in uh, so close to the resource area that it should have come through the Conservation Commission before going forward. And so that's, that's sort of the overview of this. We have, um, I issued an enforcement order earlier this week and um, for stopping work both on the, the project that was okay to go forward down at the pond, as well as this project, which is constructing a stone wall close to the house that replaces a, according uh, to the property owner and uh, that this is visible, that it replaces a retaining wall that was timber and, and um, according to the property owner, rotting. And um, those timbers are still there. And so we have asked in the enforcement order, one of the conditions was, I guess it wasn't earlier this week, it was last week, um, was to stabilize the disturbed resource, disturbed area in jurisdiction, um, which is, it's, it's cleared to the wetland. Um, there is stone wall being built. And in addition to that, uh, there are some trees that have been cl cleared in the buffer area uh, that, that that tree clearing should have come through us as well. Um, and there was some equipment uh, for stone moving resting in the parked in the buffer area. Uh, and it, there appeared to be some grading as well. And so um, in the enforcement or order, we required that there be stabilization by tomorrow and that that stabilization um, could be in uh, we gave a couple of options for the stabilization, but that um, giving tomorrow as a deadline. And um, since the we issued the enforcement order, I've been in, in communication with uh, the, the property owner and um, with two people at, at the um, property. And um, w one of whom is named Helen and um, the other is Elaine. And um, Elaine explained that, uh, well, I gave her the, num the contact information um, of a company that is professional at doing the kind of stabilization work uh, that we are asking for. And it's about a uh, roughly 6,000 square feet that we're looking at um, that, that would need to be stabilized. And so um, Elaine has reached out to Groundscapes, which is this company, and uh, they are not able to do it by tomorrow. And so one of the questions for you is, what's a reasonable deadline to have the stabilization of roughly 6,000 square feet? And what, you know, let's set a new deadline. We're going to have to, when you ratify this, we'll have an opportunity to amend anyway. So um, let's make sure we have a deadline um, that 
is feasible for the um, the property owners. And um, another question for you is. Are people able to see the picture that has the, you can see the timbers left over? Yes, I do. I see them, yeah. I do. Well, I don't, but I saw them earlier, so. Okay. Yeah, I saw them. So um, Elaine brought up a very good question that I said, well, it's a good question and I'll bring it to the commission of um, in order for the stabilization to happen, should, she have the timbers removed causing you know you're gonna have to they're pretty big so equipment you're gonna have to get some equipment in there or uh as part of we're saying no just stop everything for now and stabilize if we want to leave those timbers there so that's the second question and then the third question is um really perhaps the most challenging for you all to figure out um is whether the shoreline project um which is ready to go they were really hoping to do it in december um can proceed or whether we wrap it in as um all it has to all stop while uh for the time being while this other enforcement order is in place uh we reached out to the uh circuit rider the northeast regional circuit rider um, at Mass DEP, and she said that it, it is up to the commission, um, pointed to a few places in the enforcement manual of, of different things. The, the order of conditions could be revoked if the commission chooses to do that, or um, any number of things. It's really up to the commission to decide whether to um, be, because they're, they're unrelated, but they are on the same property, it's up to the commission. That's all I have. <laughs> um, well, let's take your questions one at a time. So, but I can't remember what the first one was. <laughs> well, so um, the deadline of tomorrow is not okay. gonna be possible. Okay. When you what? were communicating with Elaine about this, did she say that uh, she does have a, a date certain when groundscapes can come out next week? She said the earliest would be next Thursday, um, but groundscapes was also uh, wanting, they did call the conservation office wanting to learn more about exactly what we are expecting. And so I'm not, sh I'm not confident that um, with, with them not knowing exactly what they are. Uh, my, I, my name is, excuse me, I, I am from groundscapes. My name is John. <laughs> oh hi John. Um, okay, so John, before you go ahead, I, I just want to say one quick thing. Um, this to me, I, I think, is the hardest question to answer. So you're asking. Um, so the enforcement order says if the if stabilization does not occur by tomorrow, that fines will be issued. Correct? Um, I don't know. I just got this on my desk late, around two o'clock today. Well, I was asking Anna, but it looks like she's frozen. No, just, <laughs> I'm not frozen. I'm sorry. So right. why is that the most difficult? Uh, okay. Yes, I mean, in the enforcement order, I said it needed to be done um, by tomorrow. Okay, so John, why don't you say your piece and then we have to come to a decision about this one particular question. Yeah, I just learned about this around two o'clock myself. And uh, they might have been talking to somebody in my office before that. That would be Butch. And he, we had, think we are booked until next Thursday, but I could help them out, you know, start this on Monday and probably have this done by Tuesday. And what we do is we move the ties and then we would stabilize the uh, slopes with our compost blankets that we blow in. And we can, um, I don't know what kind of seeding they want done there that. Uh, does it have to be planted with native seeds there in front of that wall, or is it okay to put a lawn? I don't know where the buffer zone, where the line is. So, um, from but what I know, compost we'll put in would be like an inch and a half to two inch. It, it, it mimics the duff, so it'd be it's a hundred percent stable after that. I can guarantee you that you don't have to you don't have to do anything else to it. All you do is because. Uh, 
I mean, that, that would be all you have to do is just keep up with any invasive plants that came up or. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting that far down the road, John. We're, we're asking for some sort of a temporary but immediate stabilization. We're also okay. asking the homeowner to come back to us with a notice of intent. Uh, okay. So in, in the process of reviewing that notice of intent, you know, any further restoration will be decided on. And that's, that's weeks and weeks away. Right, okay. So what I would do- As far as the, as far as the timbers go, um, I don't think it's a good idea to remove them right now because in order to remove them, you have to drive into the disturbed area again, correct? No, we could get those out by hand and walk them up that hill. They're rotted. Those are old timbers. They're, they're light. They're probably uh, yellow pine. <clears throat> so we would pull those out by hand. There's no, no need for a machine. And then we have a hose. I don't know how, I don't know. Again, I don't know exactly where I can reach, get in here. And we would blow the compost in. And that's basically a soil amendment and it stabilizes the slope. So uh, it's basically a pre-construction, post-construction product, what we're doing. So then you can get your design and put your plantings, et cetera, down the road. So but this, that, this is what we do all the time in the winter. We've done this all winter long. Yeah. You, f you feel confident that you can have this done by Tuesday? Oh yeah, no problem. I thought you said you were booked until next Thursday. Which Tuesday? Like I said, you might have been talking to Butch, my sit, my sales. Person. Oh, 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 oh. And we, 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 but we have the guys are caught up with all the landscaping this week, and I didn't know anything about this until like two or three o'clock. Got it. And um, and I never saw the pictures until then. So I, I I'm also curious as to which pictures you're looking at. Um, there's a picture of a wall. I don't know how I can show you. Can you see on my phone here? <laughs> uh, oh, no, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's a stone wall yeah. with some about about eight feet of so. Uh, looks like they spread eight, uh, some loam in front of the stone wall, but eight feet wide. The length of the wall, probably about 50 feet. And then, and then there's another layer where they look like they dumped the railroad ties over the bank. Those look like the pictures that you have in the. Uh... Yes, but. I have three pictures. I... One, one looking up at the. They're all well, two of them are looking up at the house. One's looking down, and you can see the railroad ties, in in two of the pictures. One looking down, and one looking up at the wall. Sure. One into the wetlands, and one looking up to the stone wall. I'm yes. just are these the ones that you're talking about? These look like yours. The ones you're no. looking at. Oh, that um... one. They that one there. Yeah, that one. Michael, there. these were shared with the commission, but um, yeah, that's it. John has been working. I'm with just that. trying to get a sense of what he's familiar with. That this yeah. matches. Yeah, those match. Yep. And I wouldn't use a machine. Go back to the one with the, the next one. Next one. Next one. Yeah, right there. We can grab all that by hand, so we're not doing any more disturbing. <clears throat> and then, like I said, we'll. Just pick those up by hand, walk up the hill with them, and then we can blow the compost to stabilize the soil of the loam. How does the commission feel about? Uh... And we can actually blow some of those leaves over everything, grab some of those twigs, and mimic what's there. Um, we don't need to, we just need it to be stabilized temporarily. Okay, it will. Do you so do it? Um, do you? Will you be impacted at all by uh, the weather? We we may be getting snow this weekend. <laughs> No, that'd be fine. Um, we've put this right on the snow, and when the snow melts, the compost, I can show you pictures of jobs we've done that way before. But um, yeah, it looks like not that much snow, we'll see. But either way, we even with this, the little bit of, I think it's not that much snow coming, we could take these ties out of there and still blow over the snow. As the snow melts, the compost sits right down on top of the soil. Okay, um, thank you, John. I'd like to ask the commission, if they feel satisfied with uh, foregoing issuing citations with the promise that this work will be done on Tuesday. I'm fine with that. The, the work will be started on Monday, finished by Tuesday, Jean. Yes. Even if it took a few, a day or so more, I would not be, uh, personally. Uh, I, I, I personally can do this in one day. I'm just saying too, this, we have, again, we're, we have enough time to get this all done in one day. And as long as it's not six feet or a, hundred, or a foot of snow. 
Does anybody else on the commission want to weigh in on that question? I was I was just going to weigh in. I, yeah, it seems like the fastest and quickest way to address this. I guess I did have a question for you, John. It's a fair. It looks like a pretty. I haven't been out there, but it looks pretty steep, and parts of it, the soil is exposed and muddy. So I just wanted to know: Does this treatment prevent erosion? What does it kind of stick to the soil? Like if there are heavy rainstorm, what what happens? Yeah, we're basically mimicking the duff. We're putting down an inch organic matter. It's compost. We've been doing this for 1996. We written uh, we wrote the specs for it. It's called Earth Blanket. I I, I could send you the submittals on it. And uh, I worked with Mass Highway in place. This is in place of using loam and hydro seeding. We actually blow in the compost and we put the seed into it. But we're not going to do that in this job. We're just going to put the compost down. But uh, this is the best time to seed native seeds. The dormant seeding is the best time right now, all through the winter even, because um, they drop this all in the with all the frost and heave in the ground. This is the this is the best time to do the plantings. You actually seed some perennial grasses or something? Are you saying? I see there's sedges on that slope. Yeah, yep. yeah. I would you could use little blue stem in this job. I would use little blue stem. And then I would plug this later on. I'm, I'm going to help them with the notice of the tent, write the specs for this. But this job, yeah, I would just plant the Pennsylvania sedge. You can see it on the other picture. I can see the sedges. And I would actually leave, find some native logs, leave the logs in there, stumps. So this like this. I would mimic exactly what you see down below. This, we've done this in Mount Auburn Cemetery. I've done a lot of projects with one-to-one -one slopes where we just mimic, mimic God's land by... We use the compost tubes. My tubes are biodegradable. They're made of hemp. But from, the, from that maple tree or that oak tree on the left there up to those railroad ties, up to the stone wall, it would just look just like what you're looking at right now. I mean, you can almost, I know we have to go do all the paperwork, but we can make it look like that in a day. I would dump even leaves and brush over everything. Uh, oh, it's uh, uh, gratifying to me to hear that you're familiar with what our notice of intent is, but I want to reiterate that as far as, in my opinion, what we need right now is the immediate stabilization with the mulch that you described, and the notice of intent will come later, and anything, you know, any other um, embellishments on what's going to happen on this site will be part of the notice of intent. Yep. So, uh, does the commission agree with me on that? Yep. Yes. Uh, we also make other things. <laughs> okay. Um, so is it clear? Can, can you see that? Add one more thing uh, to for John and Anna's sake that um, that Anna be notified when you're about to conclude the stabilization next week on Tuesday, so that she can come out and inspect it. Yes, I do. So Anna, what was your question? Do I have a phone number? I can call when we're there. We'll, we'll fix that. Yes, uh, make sure you have that. So um, is it clear to you what the limits both towards the wetland, mostly towards the wetland, are where the commission would want you to stop putting that stuff there? Right under uh, the... I'll just stop right with right on the other side of the rail ties above this picture. Nothing in the, nothing in that duct that you see. I wouldn't put it on anything that's non-disturbed. Do, that do makes you sense wanna, to me? Should I revise my recommendation and and I have you meet John on site on Monday? I think so. Why don't you just do a little pre-construction meeting if you could do yeah, that? Yeah, no problem. That's no problem. I'll do that. Um, do you do erosion control? Do you think along this edge here, if you could see, whether yeah. it's part of what we're doing, whether essentially since we're gonna, it's gonna take a while to get it all, whether and worried about any sort of runoff and sediment coming, whether your stuff is good enough or whether there should just be at least a, a row of erosion control of some sort along it, that road there. It, make everybody feel better. I could put a nine inch um, tube there. It'd be compost. But I'm also going to stabilize up up to your arrow, up to those stairs, right up to the wall. You know. I yeah, I just I was just worried about right runoff from this area here that we go down yeah. and disturb it. That um, will be there won't be any erosion. That will be covered. That's it. It'll be. Oh, you would cover this too. Oh, okay, so this all would be covered as well. 
That's going to be covered up to the stone wall from those. Oh, I got you. Okay. The so, arrow about eight feet wide, all that duff will be covered. Okay. So you get rid of that, you're covering it. And yeah. uh, you really don't need, need the sock, but I mean, you can afterward, if you would think we need it after we're done, we'll put it in. But once you put that duff on, it's not going to move. It's going to be doing exactly so what you're talking doing. about going down towards where, where the leaf stuff is. Like in this. Well, I would have. I wouldn't even hit those leaves. No, nope. I would stop you would, up. In, you would stop, stop up here around there. Wherever I see soil, all okay. that is okay. All the leaf litter there is fine. That, the, okay. Those are okay. So I'm going to meet with you before you start the work or as you're be beginning the work. And you guys will come to an agreement uh, as to what the extent of your work should be between on Monday and Tuesday. Um, yes. I'd like to move on to your second question, Anna. Can you please remind us what it was? It was leave the timbers or remove them, but it sounds like John's going to remove them by hand. Right. Yes. That's the okay. third question was, does the shoreline project proceed? Right. So that, as Anna said, according to DEP, there's no, there's no set in stone way to respond to that, um, that it's up to the commission, whether or not we allow them to continue to work down at the edge of the pond. My one a concern about that is uh, that they're, and Anna, you can clarify this, but I believe some of the stones that they're planning to use down by the pond are actually in this disturbed area. Is that correct? Talking to me? I'm talking to Anna. Oh, no. That is what they told us, that the stones that you see in the picture with the equipment, um, that those stones were, um, I think it might be the first, this there, one here, these that stones? those stones are for the pond project is is what we were told Joyce is that what you recall as well uh, yeah he said he was going to get those stones I don't know if he did or not but he's the gentleman we spoke with said he would be removing those stones up to uh in front of the house outside the buffer zone um immediately he said so they might have already been moved. They might be. They might be removed. He was taking his equipment out. Um, he was getting rid of the plywood, and he was going to uh, get the stones out of there so that they wouldn't be stored. So all the just like just like Anna said, all the, any disturbed soils would be what would need to be covered and stabilized. I would let the beach project go ahead if the work is done on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, that we're talking about for stabilization, I would let the beach project go ahead since the beach project has its own. The sooner that that's a little more stabilized, that's a benefit too. So I, I, see it did our I, I agree with Michael. If, if John can complete, if John can complete the stabilization by Monday, latest Tuesday, I would not, it would be, I would lean towards not interfering with the, um, project that we already heard the NOI you know uh, Melinda O'Neill asked if what she wants to know what the waterside project is can I um Melinda are you there yes I am um I can give you a very quick summary and if you would like more detail I'd be happy to talk to you offline about it but this was something that was approved in the uh, late summer um they are they have a beachfront that's already in place that when they bought the house, they are recent, recent new owners of the property. And it's in, it's in very, the beachfront is in very poor shape. It's eroding as is constantly into the water. So they got approval to, um, to, to restore the beachfront with uh, using a mason and, um, the documentation of what it's how how it's going to be constructed is available in the conservation office. Um, but we this is something we did approve already after careful consideration. It was a you know the solution is um, it's important for them to come to it was um, important for us to allow them to do this because the conditions that existed before they got approval were unacceptable. Okay, thanks. So it's uh, they're restoring the beach or so, a, a beach area or something. They're, they're reinforcing the um, 
you know, somebody help me out here. I think they're rebuilding the edge with stone. Like the retaining right. wall. Yeah. The yeah, edge, the bank. The, yeah, the stabilizing the bank and uh, stabilizing the beach area. Yeah, there's no real beach. It's a bank that's 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 eroding down into the uh, into the pond, and they're just stabilizing the edge of the pond. Um, but if you, I mean, to, not just they're doing other things, but that's the, the goal. Melinda, if you wanted to um, dig into the details, those are available at the conservation office anytime. Including, the, you'll, you'll see the diagrams and maps. Of, I mean, the diagram of what they're actually going to do and how. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, so we, uh, so in terms of summarizing all this, that we could, uh, well, wait, Michael, I want to ask, uh, do a straw poll of the other members as to how they feel about allowing the beachfront project to move ahead. So, uh, Courtney, can we have your position on that? Yeah, I'm okay with them moving ahead. Mm -hmm. And Cindy, you already in agreement with Michael and Jessica, are you there? Hi, I'm back. I, I missed so much of it though, so I, I wouldn't feel comfortable having an opinion at this point. So I guess I'm the only person left. I, um, yeah, I'm uncomfortable with allowing it to go forward, but I, I believe I'd be overruled. So the um, majority rules. Jean, you didn't ask me. I'm very sorry, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, well, I hate to say it, if you're hoping for support at that point of view, I feel like they should go ahead. I do think, mm -hmm. you know, the conditions were very careful. Remember it was, it was narrow. They had to be really careful in how they brought in the rock and everything else. I, and I, I, maybe it makes sense to impress that again upon the homeowners, just a reminder of that. I don't know. Yeah. I, um, I'll just tell you, my reaction to Anna and Joyce stumbling on another violation <laughs> was pretty shocking to me. And it always does shock. This does happen from time to time. Somebody goes through the process with us. They understand what we're trying to accomplish. And then they, what, they just forgot they had another wetland on their property. But anyway, it's, it's a moot point at this point. You guys want them to go forward, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, where are we, Anna? Anything else to discuss on this? I don't believe so. Well, except, I would, okay, go on. I said, I don't believe so, except that I have sent a message to John with my number and I hope that uh, John, you can reply to that so that we can connect on Monday. Okay. Yeah, well, what time would be good for you? I'll reach um, you out. I'll reach you out already. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I was hoping you'd pick a time right now so we know that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh I, 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 yeah, what time is, but I don't care. 8, 8 30, 9. Um, nine, would be, 9 would be wonderful. Okay, I'll see you there at 9. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So, coming back to the enforcement order, are we, do we have to worry about that now as opposed to the fact that uh, it's in place? And we don't have to do anything, uh, and we'll just see if everything gets done. I don't want to make everything key to Monday, Tuesday, if there's some weird event that happens yes, especially. on Wednesday. <laughs> that, but I assume it'll be done in the first half of next week. Um, yeah, yeah. What, weather permitting here. I mean, again, we're not sure what's going to happen Saturday. Okay. Um, we'll put our faith in that, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, I'm actually, this is pretty key. Um, I, please do ratify the enforcement order. And yes, um, vote. yes, I, the date in there is uh, December 17th. Uh, I would be much more comfortable if we pick a date that is at least a week out um, as you're amending the order, as you're ratifying it. The date for what is? is I had said it need to be stabilized by tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Um, How about by the end of next Wednesday, the twenty second? I like that, Michael. Yeah, because you were talking about the first half of the week. I I, I think that's 
And John seems to feel comfortable even with a few events that gives him a day or two slack. Does that make sense to yep. you, John? Yes, thank you. I have a question about that because my recollection is we talked about this last time that when you're ratifying, you have to ratify it and then you can amend it. Remember last time we discussed this? Yeah, I remember what you're saying, Carol. Yeah, we're all ready to um, amend, amend it. the Hollis. We have to ratify it first. Okay, so um, it will be great if you could ratify it and then have another vote to amend it and we'll make sure that both of those are in the box for you to sign. I move to ratify the enforcement order. I'll second. All those in favor, Jean, I. Oh, sorry, any discussion? Hearing none. Jean, I. Michael. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Carol. Aye. Am I forgetting somebody? Courtney, Jessica. I. Courtney, Jessica. I. Courtney. Yeah. Sorry. Motion carries. Um, so are we making another motion? I move to uh, modify the enforcement order so that the work is completed, stabilization is completed by the end of Wednesday, December 22nd. Did you mean to say I, I move to amend the enforcement order? Yes. I second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, Jean, aye. Michael? Aye. Carol? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Cindy? Aye. And Jessica, if you're here? Aye. Motion carries. So please be looking for, oh, uh, I guess we can't move to ratify the amended uh, enforcement order, right? Or can we? What do you mean? We just did. I think that I, I'm trying to look it up again, but last time basically you can ratify it and you need to ratify it because it's a way of con confirming that the agent had the authority to issue it to begin with. Right. And then I believe you can just amend it and then it doesn't have to be re ratified because we voted on it, right? We just amended it. Yep, we're done. Yeah, I think we're done. Great. <laughs> John, thank you so much for being here. It was really nice that we realized that you were from Groundscapes and you could talk about this and, and looking forward to seeing the work that you, well, talking to you about the work on Monday. Yeah, it looks like it's good, interesting work too. Appreciate it. Thank you, yeah, thanks. I appreciate your time. You're welcome, thank you. Have a good thank night. Thank you. Bye. What's next, folks? We can do minutes, we can do the warrant. I can quickly say what I wanted to say when I added it under the 48 hour rule. I guess I, I need to ask again, if anybody, any guests have any further questions or concerns. I'm gonna say good night and uh, happy holiday. Good night, Joyce, happy holidays. Thank you for your work. <laughs> Ditto from Melinda, happy holidays guys. Thanks for all the work you do. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Happy good holidays, Melinda. Okay. Good night. Good night. Go forward so, on the minutes. So I, with our new system now, we could just edit the minutes in the uh, in the box. And I did. Yes, and I did too. So here it is. People look at I it and say anything. And you uh, and you could actually just type instead of telling me what to type, and then we could criticize you whether you could spell or not. Um, <laughs> Or you could tell me to do something. I don't care. <laughs> um, I could scroll down since I'm sharing. I guess since I'm sharing the screen, I guess I should be typing because I I'm not. You could type on your own, but it takes a little lag time, as I found out with the order. Uh, okay. Anybody have any comments on this page? I've already made my comments, so I'll, I'll remain silent. I'll just wait to hear Jean and. Carol, Courtney, and Jessica. Courtney and Jessica, you need, you need to pipe up with you're done. Sorry, I didn't notice this earlier, but I would love to remove the S from the end of my. I know, I remember your name. I remember seeing that. I was trying to remember where it was. <laughs> uh, I have a comment um, under poetry reading. Um, Neil read a poem about stars. So I believe Orion is spelled O R I O N.
And I'm done with this page. Move along. I'm good. Oops, sorry. I think I did a whole page down. This is just a small thing, but I think the it's MAC McDowell. Uh, question is, this is, I guess we should say Roy, because there's several. Yeah, there. you're right. You're right, Michael. Yeah. Also, we need to add an A. Uh, to the native plantings, the plan shows native, it's a correction, three lines below that, four lines below that. Where, 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 what? So just, say, um, just an A, that it, an A is missing from native, native oh, planting. Oh, just a misspelling. Yeah. Uh, I guess we should have done spell check before we do this stuff. Let's, oh, maybe it's a word, but I think. Uh, three lines down. In that red, that red line right there, just below. Oh, yep. oh, I see. Does mark it as, oh yes, because it was added in. I, uh, I can move on. Yep, me too. The budget update sentence is a little redundant. How about just saying the chair stated that the interim finance director has researched the key fund and how those funds can be spent. Take out spending of wetlands protection or take out spending okay. anyway. Yeah. How the wetland protection uh, the state fund Michael in the section on yacht club the second mention of the first mention of yacht club has a little DC. <coughs> It's in the second line there. Oops. I guess you still don't get away from the editing portion, Michael. <laughs> yep, all the power to me for putting it on my <laughs> share screen. But, but at least it makes it easier for us to jointly edit it. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. For I'm sure. done. Age if other people are. As you know, with the as you're reading the part about that you voted to ratify the uh, enforcement order, I apologize for not getting to that. Whoops, what? I don't know if there's something procedurally that needs to be done with a vote. What do you mean? That, you mean today it, well, compared are you comparing what we did last time to today and we need to do something different? I'm not quite sure where you're going. Uh, the enforcement order for 
Holliston for yeah. sorry for Constitution Village. I did not amend. Well, I yes. guess. Oh right. Oh yes. Oh, the fact that you didn't amend it. Yes, I was. Whatever. That's no, okay. But yeah. Um, I'm ready to move. This is it. I move that we accept the minutes as edited. I'll second that. All those in favor, Jean, aye. Michael? Aye. Daryl? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Okay, so it's already saved here. So you guys have it right here in the box. That's exciting. And I could just exit out. Okay, and I think I don't have to share my screen and subject you anymore. Instead, <laughs> we have to look at each other, which has its own pros and cons. Look at the warrant, or has everybody looked at it already? I did look at the warrant, and I and I would just like to comment that I really like having all of that detail there in the box to look at and to understand. I think it's much more transparent to do it that way. And I really applaud whoever decided to put it in the box. I, I like it. I would encourage it in the future. Well, Cindy, Switch. you'll be happy. It's the only way we can do warrants going forward. It's a new <laughs> thing with the finance department. <laughs> so what did what'd you, so what'd you buy for forestry supplies? You got an auger? What'd you get for? Uh, an you auger. Get in there, Michael. What? You gotta keep an scrolling auger. down. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, it's on the bottom. Oh, I yeah, didn't it's down. all there. Uh, let's see, is it conservation wetlands filing fee expenditure? Doesn't say what it is, or does it? Oh, I have to keep scrolling endlessly. Keep oh, scrolling. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So, uh, do we approve the warrant, or we just look at it? No, we don't it? approve it. It's already been signed. Has it? Yeah. Yes. Anna oh. signs it as the department head. You can just look at it. Oh, right, exactly. Wow. Yes, we got a molybdenum thread on extension for our thingy there. Um, so what's next? Anna, do you have any site issues or questions? No, I do have the two administrative approvals to mention that I did not get to them and I am going to get to them on Monday. Well, so those do not get included then in the uh, the minutes, since we you haven't even done them. Um, but Cindy, you had something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, just very briefly. I want I did email the whole entire group, but um, I just wanted to let everyone know that we will be having the CMMCP. That's the mosquito control. They will be doing a presentation, a Zoom presentation for our entire town and anyone that's interested in attending um, on February 15th at 7 p.m. So that's a Tuesday night. And um, how are we doing the and PR? What, and anyone that misses it can can watch it at their leisure because it will be a Zoom presentation. So I'm I'm, you know busy working on that and setting that up. I don't know who to get the Zoom link from. I, I, I contacted uh, David Williams because I didn't know, because it's going to be town-wide, I didn't know if I needed to go to David Williams to get that. Yeah, no, you could probably deal with Neil and just get a link that you just send out to everybody. Okay, and then just I'm that, planning to- Just more a matter that. of where it's posted. What? I, I'm going to uh, advertise it on the town website. I also- contacted David about, I don't know who to really contact about this, but putting things on the town calendar on the website. Yeah. Who do I get in touch with about that? Does anyone know? Je Jeannie is probably the- uh, Oh, Jeannie. Person. Okay. Well, I can get in touch with her. All right. So I, I mean, it almost would be nice to I put a little, given all the controversy, it would always be nice to see if it would go in one of the little local papers. Well, uh, that's a good idea, Michael. Maybe I can write up a little blurb about that. I was also going to put it on next door. Yeah, oh, that would be good too. Yeah, the yeah. newspapers will take anything, even if you just do a uh, <laughs> an inch or two, because uh, it's always uh, such an issue. It's like a headline. Always wondered about that mosquito spraying and how and all it's done. Right, right. <laughs> so anyway, I don't want to take up too much more time talking about it, but that's that's 
you know, a go. Thank you for, for that. Um, I move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, Jean, aye. Michael? Aye. Carol? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Courtney? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Hey, happy holidays, everybody. Okay.